<laughs> we saw, we, we challenged ourselves, we conquered, and I don't have to do it ever again. <laughs> Till next time. Till next time. Who knows next time. <laughs>
3.33. Oh, yay. It's getting closer. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. There's no chain to hold on to. Just kidding. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's what would happen to me. If I were standing on a ledge, it would probably just collapse on me and I would die. <laughs> That's why I don't do these things. Guess what? You know what? The bathrooms are scarier than that. <laughs> well, my, my guess is there's not a lot of maintenance that comes up here to clean. <laughs> Some of the worst bathrooms <laughs> I've ever done. seen. She was laughing at me because I said, I can't look down. <laughs> Already? Halfway there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going, we're going. Watch where you're going. <laughs> so when they say it's worth it, is that like? It's terrifying and it's hard, but the views are worth it? Like I don't know. no pain, no gain? Oh, tell us, give us the goods. Uh, he can't talk, but he could do hand signals. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, just another ordinary hike. <laughs> so there's a crow up there. Sorry. Our bones are not ready for picking yet. Yet. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Trust in them with your life. They could stumble and you'll hit the river. It bottom. terrifies me. It's, it's, it's I'm really dangerous. terrified. Okay. <laughs> it can be dangerous. I'll probably do it anyway. First time I did it, I was 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way. It's way different than this. Oh, okay, <laughs> way, I bet. Back then. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. See ya. See ya. Thanks. Forget falling to your death. I'm gonna die of a heart attack before I get up there. You can see like the end, we're almost there. Yeah, I know, this you is awesome. Finally, uh, your dream will be realized, right? <laughs> yes, and, and your nightmare will be over? Yes. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> this a is a momentous uh, moment. <laughs> look at that. That doesn't look too bad. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? You got it. Awesome. This, uh, this is not the top. <laughs> it's not that? Don't look down. Uh, I won't. I'm, not, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. This is not my thing. I'm saying then you stop at top. Oh my god. <laughs> That's looking pretty exciting, huh? Yeah. How you doing, love? Mm, I'm still comfortable here hugging this tree. <laughs> You're just never ever gonna move from there. Not go back, not go up. <laughs> I wish I could magically just be back in the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide if I'm just being stupid. Right. Well, I'm ready to go because pretty soon it's gonna we're gonna be in the shadows here too, so which should be fine. There's lots of daylight left, so Okay, I'm gonna go. You're gonna go? Uh -huh. Alright. You're going, you gonna go first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Sheree, I got geared up a little right. bit. Nice. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can take one. <laughs> That's okay. You're going to focus on hanging on. <laughs> Okay. I can wait up a little bit if you want. Okay. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Where am I going? I don't yeah, keep going. I'm already starting to freak out. <laughs> Enjoy the journey!
Hey, great job, you made it. I made it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Guys, this is no joke. This is nuts, <laughs> nuts. It's a pretty insane hike. But so. I'm actually recovering from a broken toe. Right. And I don't have full function of my right hand. So I was really nervous doing this, <laughs> but I made it. Yeah. I'll cry when I get to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to go back down. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Way down there. Well, you know, looking at this right now, I'm like, that looks impossible to climb. And I can't believe we did it. It's actually easier than it looks. So if you do make it to this point and you look at that, do it. Because it is easier than it looks, but I'm not doing it again. Yeah, it just looks like you're climbing on sheer cliff. Yeah. Right there. You can't really see the detail that there is chains and, and ways to get around the points with no chains. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's insane. tip you thought of uh, why e-bikes are such a nice thing to have here well we're thinking that since we're the only ones here that people were rushing to get out of here some people were saying oh we didn't have time to make it to the top I'm like you didn't have time because they're on the shuttles and the shuttles probably stop running at a certain time I think time. they stop at seven or eight we'll have to check on that for sure yeah, but it but is light we had this to ourselves. Till quite a bit later. I mean, you still got bright sun over there and we got over an hour and a half worth of daylight. So we got plenty of time to get down, but it's so great not to have the crowds. <sighs> it's nice. Right yeah. now. So hot tip, e-bike in again. <laughs> and speaking of it, it's not hot now. No. It's already cooling off. Yeah. So it actually, uh, well, you've got your you little- You had to put a long sleeve shirt on. Your little hat on hat. there. So. Yeah, and I'm ready to get out of here. But uh, yeah, let's get going. There's nobody here. It's like we have the entire Zion Park to ourselves. Right, what would a private tour in Zion be? Right. Not they, just private tour, but you have Zion National Park to yourself for the entire day. Yeah, this is great. And nobody around talking, it's quiet. You can hear the water rushing, the birds singing. It's just nature, it's perfect. It is so awesome. And there are just a couple people on the trail we hear once in a while, yeah. but it is, magical at sunset here and yeah it's so peaceful pleasant oh this is awesome this is the way to do it because you can have so many fewer people here so we still have plenty of time to bike out yep. and still see okay i need to go to the bathroom still okay let's go it's been hours <laughs> <laughs> the bridge to the other side and we are no longer on the trail i can't believe it yeah that was awesome, awesome. job yeah, yeah yeah good job for you too high five <laughs> <laughs> we saw we we challenged ourselves we conquered and i don't have to do it ever again <laughs> till next time till next time <laughs> <knows> next time <laughs> hey guys thanks for watching this video we hope you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up thumbs if you like up. it would you hike Angel's Landing? Would you? Most of the mountain tribe probably would say yes, but I wanna hear what everybody says. Let us know below, and if you're brand new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. <laughs> that subscribe We're button. We're so tired, we can't even think. What are we supposed to say? I don't know. But enjoy your, your journey. journey.
Jeez. <laughs> and I recorded that. <laughs> Are these fingerprints? Because people dig in because they're scared? <laughs> yeah. They got a good grip there. Yeah. Look, they're everywhere. Except these were giants. The giants were scared. <laughs> Probably before they had a nice paved trail up here. That looks like a puppy foot. Even puppies were scared. This is a good little spot. Oh, it's a terrible spot. Why? <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. It just keeps getting better. How do you talk and climb at the same time? <laughs> Woo I can't do it. I'm scared. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Cherie, you trickster. Hey, how you doing? Do you want to use the restroom too? I wouldn't recommend it. No. Yeah, it smells. Can the wind blow me over? Probably not. Okay. Woo. <laughs> this is not the scariest spot, but they put a guardrail here. <laughs> oh, doo -doo, doo -doo. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta get up here first. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna make it. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. There's no chains to hold on to. Just kidding. Quick clip. <laughs> Damn it, I'm gonna do this thing. Oh, you're getting amped up. Everybody says it's worth it. <laughs> so the FOMO is winning. FOMO winning. There's a bench. Nope. <laughs> Woo! Hello. <laughs> There's a good echo in here. What did you just say? Hello. All I heard was the, oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, did you just fall down? <laughs> Where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the worst bathrooms I've ever time. seen. You know what? They might not. Uh, yeah. Know, who's gonna check on it? Right. Who's gonna double check? <laughs> yeah. Who's holding them accountable exactly? Where's the supervisor here? <laughs> All right. Let's make this happen. All right. Fun, aren't you? I am. I hate this. <laughs> Damn that FOMO, though. Damn that FOMO. Look at the eagles. They're vultures, and they're waiting for my dead body. Oh. <laughs> Barefoot climber. Wow. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, well, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Made it this far. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stop now, right? Right. <laughs> you know, when when you're going down, you can. I'm behind you. Right. Was it worth it? Yeah, I I say so. You know, it was personal challenge. It was awesome and check it off the bucket list now oh so i can check something off the bucket list that was never on the bucket list <laughs> and for a reason <laughs> challenge but it's done and i don't need to do it again do you remember that bond movie it was called which one never say never oh. <laughs> but i think it's time to end this video because i think we're just gonna be going ouch 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 <laughs> And, and I'm hungry and <laughs> right. I need and, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and need to find the quickest hot tub and the and the quickest yes. IPA. Yes, there to... are any hot springs in the area. <laughs> Enjoy, Enjoy the, the journey. <laughs> <laughs> the force is not strong in you, Cherie. <laughs> yes it is. Wah, 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 wah. I'm winning. What are you talking about? Take the long way home If it meant I'd go Walking by your door Together we could see Where the road will lead To the unknown There is no end If you believe Just take my You ready for the 
for another ordinary day. Ready for an ordinary day. Because this is what I wear every day, ordinarily. You shall not pass. <laughs> but we're going on a pass. Yes. We are back in Zion National Park. We're going to the Narrows. <laughs> A narrow passageway. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one. He was looking forward to Angel's Landing. He got his fill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now so it's time for the... Watch for that video. It could be out already. It might not Probably. be out. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? But look for that. That'll be another video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're Enjoy, enjoy the, the Journey. journey dot dot life. Life. Let's go. You make my world come. Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. What do we, we need do for some you? gear. Uh, when is the sun typically in there? I know it's going to be narrow for the sun. So. Yeah, so uh, despite what the name may be, the, the narrows, it's still probably about 30, maybe 40 feet okay. wide. At the very narrowest point of the canyon, it's probably only 15 or 20 feet. Well, cool. So, it, are there options on what to get, or is it just yeah, basic so package? Or? We have two packages, really, that uh, we're giving out. We have the bib package, which comes with the bib, the hiking boots, the socks, and the stick, and that will run okay. you $55. If you just want the hiking boots, uh, the socks, and the stick, it's $29. We, okay. you could either you could really everything on, make sure it fits and feels good. You want to be comfortable. You don't want them too tight or too big to where your foot's shaking around in them. Uh, okay. And then don't wear your socks underneath. Just wear these socks. And then, um, in theory, uh, you're not going to get wet underneath, right? Nope. As long as, <laughs> as, right. as, yeah. as, long as you okay. don't fall in, you'll be fine. Gamma's into the river. <laughs> I can't even get my toes through. That thing is tight. Oh my god. It's a big river pajama party. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you just shimmy it on. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking for the bib and I think I put it on backwards. <laughs> Another 15 minutes to get it off and switch it around, I guess. Is there a bib back here? Yeah, that's the front. <laughs> but you know what the good part is? Tags are the dead giveaway. <laughs> you can't really tell the difference. Because <laughs> it's so attractive on both sides. <laughs> yeah. It's not a fashion thing. <laughs> all right, now to get it off. <laughs> it's like a job getting that on. <laughs> yeah. Take it off. I'm exhausted. It's time to go home. <laughs> yeah, what, what are your names? I'm Marie. Marie? Nikki. And Nikki. It's okay. Nice to yeah, meet thanks you guys. for staying high. Yeah. And, and enjoy, enjoy your journey. journey. Well, I thought this was a really cool thing here. Again, shortcut for e-biking in. As you come all the way up here, just past the bus only entrance, and then you can usually find a spot in here late in the day. This is kind of cool. These walking sticks. I took the seat off completely, and these are the rentals, but this is gonna ride safe like that how about that and we don't have to hang on to them so super cool i macgyvered it so tree's waiting for me in the shade jeep is locked up so got all our gear <laughs> waterproof backpack let's go now if you're new to the rv life or even experienced i have a course that you can get available for free it's the beginner's guide to RVing and it's through RV Life or RV Trip Wizard. So if you are already a member, you can get this course completely for free. And as you may have heard me mention before, we love our RV Life and RV Trip Wizard uh, membership because that's how we navigate through the country and make sure we stay on RV safe roads. We keep track of our entire camping schedule and uh, it's just great being able to input all the campgrounds that we're going to be staying at and the dates and then it tells us the route to take 
We love it. Uh, actually, I'll put a QR code right here so you can just scan it with your smartphone. And actually, I'll give you a code here on the screen that will save you 25% off of your membership. Yes. And then you can go to RV Masterclass, which is part of RV Life, and find my course. And again, there will be a link to this down below in the description and the pinned comment, as well as our other favorite camping apps. Like they'll come up and like stand like this and like come real close to you, but they won't like go in it. Like they they are like want they're like a dog. Like you oh, know, like okay. be a dog around your shit. Like really? Uh, Say feed me. Like they're like I I've want to get in there. Seen that feed me. They're very domesticated, I guess. Yeah, wow. You know? Usually they're so skittish. Like, what? Yeah. Look at that reflection right there. It's like, <laughs> so there you can, you can tell the difference between beach tribe and mountain tribe. Yeah, I'm like, Tree's the water. Trees about the water. I'm like, oh, look at the mountains. No, look at the, the cliffs. <laughs> the rocks can get a little slippery, hence the stick. I'm not a walking stick kind of person. Me neither, but I'm glad I have. Yeah, I don't use these on hikes. Well, you usually don't hike through uh fast moving uh water either and it can knock you over right and make you slip easy cheers our first water heart cheers cheers <laughs> <laughs> every second closer explosions in my mind yeah it's getting deep in here <laughs> Oh, it does. It's very cool. Oh, it's so awesome. I'm in the water. <laughs> you're, you're in the water in the desert. <laughs> oh, this is sweet. I don't remind you in the desert. I can enjoy this. <laughs> Did you see that guy take a dip over there? Okay, no. Slipped and fell. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was, we run that into that? them like three or four times Austin now. and Haley, yeah. I think four or five times here in Zion. We even shared taking pictures of each other on top of Angel's Landing. Right. Then we ran into them at dinner. Last and then night. here we are in the middle of a uh, river. <laughs> <laughs> right, out of thousands and thousands of people. I the say odds 
of that are probably better to win the lottery. Yeah, <laughs> I'd just say it's a divine appointment for whatever reason. Right. Synchronicity. <laughs> And the cool thing is, this late in the day again, we have it almost all to ourselves <laughs> as I almost fall. <laughs> it can be difficult navigating in here because you can't see where your stick is going half the time. So you're looking for that. But if you're next to one of these, hold on to it. It'll give you extra balance. Oh, my stick was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have a little theory here that it might be better on the right side going downstream or the left side going upstream just because maybe that gets a little less sun it's a little colder maybe has a little less moss because there are definitely some slippy areas yeah. in here the cool thing about this is you go through different sections and they're all so different we haven't seen them all we already decided we're coming back to do it all like a whole day trip pack up picnic lunch but it's so cool because I mean, we just entered this area and it's so quiet and peaceful it's yeah quiet. it is so awesome in here we saw a lot of people in here without the rental suits and you know it might be fine you know if you're not sensitive to colder water or if it's super hot uh, but there are rocks you can't see and as you're walking through here you know the suits do protect you a little bit so that's an idea <laughs> so last little bit here so be careful no more no, spills no last minute spills <laughs> no <laughs> i'll keep an eye on you just in case one of the cool things about zion is these huge boulders everywhere that have come down from up there like this one right here is just trying to imagine that thing sliding down what that would be like you wouldn't want to be there <laughs> remember that story i was telling you about <laughs> tell the story yeah how it was it the is it the weeping wall what is that yeah the weeping wall yeah is a big boulder fell with some visitors there. yeah like 10 people got trapped and had to be rescued by helicopter <laughs> so nobody got hurt nobody got hurt but talk about uh, an experience yeah <laughs> i was just telling tom with all the vegetation and the water and the beautiful rocks it's like an oasis out here right yeah totally So it does get cold at night. It does get cold at night. Yeah, so it's safe to walk back. Well, we do have mountain lions in the canyon. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. We will keep an eye out. There's a few bugs in here. The flies bite. And if you have family that's with you that doesn't want to do this part, there are so many areas in here that you can just hang out for hours, have a picnic lunch all along this beautiful creek here. So it's fun for everyone, no matter what your skill level, even if you're not going to hike all the way in, you can go a little ways. It's, it's all up to you or stay right here where the bus stops and we're just about back. So the safe way I found with the electric e-bikes and if your e-bike works the same way, our seats will come all the way off right here. So we'll just pop this seat out and take, loop those through there. You have to have five hands. <laughs> yeah, before I put the seat back, I'm gonna push these up through here to kind of hang on to them while we're going. So the loops hang on there, put the seat back in like so. Get in. And look at that.
Wow, that was super fun. Oh my gosh, that was my favorite. The Narrows. The Narrows. Yeah, Zion has been such an incredible stop for us. It's sad to have to move on. Yeah, it's my favorite national park so far. And yeah, what a great way to cool off as the summer months start heating things up. It's just awesome. It's getting in that crisp, cool, blue, clear water. Ah, it was amazing. Right. So would you recommend equipment like what we had or or no? What would you say? Me? Yeah. It depends on the temperatures, I think. If I think it's a really hot day, I don't think... I The stick is a definite. Yes. The stick is a definite. You no need that question. Yes, because you sometimes you don't know what you're stepping on and it helps give you that balance. I still fell three times you fell once. Right. With the stick. So definitely the stick. The shoes, I don't know. I think if you have some good grippy waterproof shoes, I think that would be fine. Cause I felt like my feet were sloshing around in water from step one. But don't go out at night. Because, like we probably mentioned in the video, there's mountain lions. Mountain lions. At least out that's there. what she said. <laughs> she could have just been trying to scare us, but right. There's probably I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not taking a chance. <laughs> so if you do visit Zion National Park, we highly recommend the Narrows. If you're only doing a few activities, make sure that is one of them. It is super cool. And be sure to watch for our other Zion videos. We've got several of those that are out or coming out very soon. Yes. Uh, so check those out. We'll link to some of those down below. And put it on your bucket list. Yes. If you haven't planned a trip to Zion National Park, do it. Right. I had never heard of it before I started RVing. Then I kept hearing it like it was a buzzword, like Zion, Zion. Like, what is this Zion? Wow. And it is not just your favorite national park. It's many people's favorite Utah national park yeah. as well. It's an oasis in the middle of the desert. Hit that subscribe button so you can catch all of our videos like this one. And if this video, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Maybe yours isn't hot pink like mine, and hopefully yours isn't broken either. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's not from the Narrows. Not from the Narrows. <laughs> Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments. Would you hike out in the water in the Narrows, or have you? Let us know. And uh, for now, we'll say goodbye until and, the next video. Yeah. And remember, enjoy, enjoy your, your journey. journey. Okay. I like Chinese food. Her <laughs> <laughs> pup's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> is that torture? <laughs> oh, it really is. Because we just sit over here all day and it we get to we food. just get to smell all the burgers being cooked oh, and we get to cool man. over it. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm gonna go have a burger while you're doing that. Yeah, seriously. And I'll we'll come back in about 20 minutes. <sighs> Enjoy, enjoy, your enjoy your journey. Yes, yeah, thank okay, you. No more excitement. Okay, okay. Enjoy, enjoy your journey. journey. Woo! <laughs> You're all set, huh? <laughs> I got my two alcohol beds. <laughs> That's what we forgot. That's and what we I forgot. Got my, we this forgot the alcohol. And, uh, I wouldn't want to. Wow, nice. To infinity and beyond. Oh wait, this is not my Buzz Lightyear uniform. <laughs> it's close. Yep. It's same color. You want a shower? <laughs> Just lay up against that. I know. That's so cool. <laughs> like a snow angel. I could do a snow angel. <laughs> there you go. Angels landing. <laughs> That was such a cool waterfall. Yeah, totally. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> At least I didn't get wet. <laughs> it's like, can I take a picture? I, I want to get, I want to look over here and then look at here. He's like, you don't have food. Never mind. <laughs> Out here. Right? Yeah, totally. 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 Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No.
<laughs> we have to see you shake your booty at the same time. Oh, you're going to do a dance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Another wild turkey. We've seen quite a few today. <laughs> I'm talking to it. Give me a minute. <laughs> Does this get hot <laughs> when you're not in the oh, water? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, these are what we give to the kids that are too okay. small to fit in the bibs. So, it's the same ringtone my dad's has. I know, it's like so cheesy. <laughs> I'm like, can you please get rid of that? <laughs> like, what, what are you, 90? <laughs> <laughs> the force is not strong in you, tree. <laughs> yes, it is. Wah, 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 wah. I'm winning. What are you talking about? <laughs> Cherie and I are passionate about helping those that suffer with PTSD. PTSD or trauma is more widespread than you may know. You can take the official PSSI 5 self-assessment test to see if you have it. You can take it for free at Cherie's website, thegatewayprocess.com, where you can scan this QR code right here if it's easier. It's been amazing to see so many of you connect with her and it has changed her life. Cherie understands the deep depths of PTSD and there is help available. Uh, you don't have to be in the military to have suffered with it. Yes, a lot of our service members do, and we thank you for your service. People from all walks of life, even young children, can have PTSD from various life circumstances. There is a solution, believe it, and there's actually programs that you can have it done for free or a reduced cost for military and first responders. All of that information will be available on thegatewayprocess.com. Here we are on the edge of mystery we long. Look at all that BLM camping out there. For a life of new discovery. Focus we are sharing the GPS coordinates of all of them. Into the unknown. Waving goodbye to a worry And we're ready to go We ride This is the bridge we'd have to go over 13-4 <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> I don't think so We're getting ready to go through there. Wow, boondocking Zion. Wow. So cool. <laughs> now this is not Zion right here. No, we've moved on. <laughs> right. But we gotta talk about it. We definitely have to talk about it because that was our favorite yet. Uh, to have the views of the peaks from Zion. Right. And 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes from the park. Oh my gosh. And it was free. It was yeah, so awesome. And it felt a little bit like our own private spot. It did. Because there are a lot of other boondocking places on public land uh, off of Highway 9, but we found those roads very rough. Yes. And packed. Packed. <laughs> Lots of RVers out there. 
And as we've mentioned before, we kind of like to have our, our own, own little space. space. Yeah. yeah. So we found one. <laughs> right. And for the most part, we were alone. We were there for how many nights? 11 nights. Was it really? Yes. Yeah, we did extend because we were having so much fun in Zion. Totally. And one thing that's really cool about this spot is you don't have to go very far on the dirt road. Yes. That's a big plus. Right, uh, because some of these boondocking and free camping spots, it's lots, it could be miles. <laughs> Off-roading. <laughs> uh, you have dirt road, rough road, and very little of that, and there are several huge spaces. Yes. We got one of them, a fellow Momentum owner, yes. actually got another one. He said hi on the Momentum <laughs> Facebook group. That was super cool. Very big rig friendly this spot which you can't say for a lot of boondocking spots right and you know what we'll do because we want to share this location with you is I will put the exact GPS location for this spot down in the description and you'll have to come back to this video and let us know if you stayed there because yes. we loved it oh my gosh it's such a great spot and it was like 360 mountains Every direction. Yeah. Every direction. So cool. And how do we find spots like this in general? Well, we've got the Dirt Pro app, and we can actually give you guys a 90 day subscription for free. Yes. So that link is down below in the comments. Check it out. That's how we've been finding all of our free camping spots this season, check it out. Right, and people seem to really be loving this app. We're getting a oh lot of gosh. great feedback from it, so we're super excited about sharing that with you. It is great. Hundreds of you have already joined yeah. with our link, and, and we appreciate that. So check out the dirt. And our solar and batteries did awesome yes, here. they did. Plentiful sun. Yes. And one thing that I started doing here is I finally went into the LCI one control panel for the generator, super cool, and put in the automatic start feature yes. for the generator. And we had other people comment on other videos saying, why are you not using it that? It is really a cool feature. Because what it does, it eliminates not knowing when to start your generator. Yeah. You know, as it's a cloudy day, a few days were cloudy, and we've worn down the batteries enough because we are doing air conditioning, lots of cooking, and we set it to start at, I think, 11 volts. Yeah. And 10.5 volts is when the batteries shut down. And at ele But at 11 volts, generator comes on for one hour, charges them up, shuts off. Perfect. All by itself, and it works seamlessly. Yeah, flawlessly. Super, super cool. Now, we know everybody can't have that or use that, but if you're in the market for an RV, look for the LCI One Control, and it is super cool. Right, and thank you to those of, the, uh, of you that commented and recommended that we use that feature, because we are new to this, and we listen to your suggestions, like we, we do a lot of times, and learn from you, so thank you. Right, and, and the technology in the right spaces yeah. for this really makes this a lot more fun and less stressful. Yes. And speaking of technology, this was the fastest internet we've ever <laughs> gotten anywhere. It's so weird being out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And have great internet. We were in a KOA before this in a hurricane and had terrible internet. Terrible from the KOA, terrible, terrible from the PEP wave because the signal just was blocked by a big mountain. Yeah, we couldn't wait to get out of there. Right. <laughs> but out here or out there in that previous spot near Zion, we got 90 to 100 megs download on AT&T. Crazy. Yeah, super cool. If you're looking for an internet solution, I'll link to that video down below. But also, we use a PEP wave system with an antenna on the roof of the RV. Well worth the investment. Yeah. I mean, it, it just kicks butt most of the time. If you're working from the road or you need your internet, it's amazing. But for those of you that 
like to get out in nature and don't need the internet. <laughs> yeah, don't I'm worry jealous. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> but we do use it to watch TV, we do. Netflix, Prime yep, yep. at night. Skinwalker Ranch lately. Have you seen that? <laughs> Comment below. We're getting ready to go through there. <laughs> oh yeah, a little preview. Being that we're in Utah, we gotta check out Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, see if we right. can see some UFOs. Right. So as we mentioned, we went 11 days. This was the max that we've done without changing out water. Oh, so, and also we had a guest come for a couple of days. Your son came. Yes. He, I think he took one shower, did a little more cooking maybe. So we might be able to go longer than three days. We'll see. Right, and it was our first time actually running both fresh water tanks down low to where we never ran out of no, water. but you could hear the heat, the water pump really We're struggling. Working harder. Mm -hmm. so In the it, end. Yeah, it was time, but yeah, it was a, a good amount. I think if we were a, li right, a little more uh, conservative with water, we might be able to stretch that a little longer. Maybe a couple weeks. We're going to try for 14 days. Yeah, we'll That's have to do be that a goal. Yeah. in the future. And what somebody said that one of the ways of extending your tanks out there would be to dump your gray water on the ground. We don't do that. No. I mean, even though it's allowed in some places, we just don't feel right about that. Because gray water still isn't really clean water. No, because there's there might be chemicals in there from washing dishes or and I, I don't know. I don't think it's a good look. If somebody's driving by and you're pumping your gray water out, they may think it's your black tank and yeah. call you in or something. It's just not a, I don't know. Yeah, I know one way to cut back on black tank. What's that? You'd have to cut back and go to the bathroom. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> where do I go from there? <laughs> to the bathroom? I don't know. No! Are you serious? <laughs> no. Again? So if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can catch all of the amazing places like this that we are boondocking or free camping in because we are sharing the GPS coordinates of all of them. Yes. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Not hot pink, hopefully. <laughs> Yours isn't broken like mine. RVs are dangerous. I've said this before in other videos. <laughs> But give it a big thumbs up. We'd appreciate that. Yeah, let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments. Have you been to Zion? Have you boondocked around here? Let us know or would you camp or boondock here? So uh, we appreciate your comments and thanks so much for watching guys. Yeah. We really appreciate that. And we're we gonna see you on the road too. Yes. We're going to see you on the road. Absolutely. <laughs> We've been running into dozens of you yeah, so far. Yeah, it's been awesome. This year. Yeah. You'll have to watch our next video to see the next amazing spot like this. Actually, it is this. We'll tell you where this is next time. With GPS coordinates. Yes. But until then, we'll see you in the next video. And remember, enjoy, enjoy your, your journey. journey. Are you scared? Am I scared of UFOs? Nah. Shree got lunch at Tropical Smoothie and I don't think I'm hungry anymore. I've, I've had enough dirt out here, I think, for lunch. This was my favorite national park. I get amped up. I can't get enough. I'm always running like a madman. This was my favorite national park. Really? Zion? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Definitely one of my favorites uh, for sure. I don't know if we can say enough about it. Yeah. We I, did. I was so taken back by how 
it was just like a tropical oasis how much fun we had e-biking in all the activities that we did there it, it was just a great experience and we didn't do everything no <laughs> but there's more we want to go back and do <laughs> Damn that FOMO though. Damn that FOMO. Look at the eagles. They're vultures and they're waiting for my dead body. Oh. <laughs> and we're almost there. Yeah. I know. This is we, awesome. Finally, uh, your dream will be realized, right? <laughs> yes. And, and your nightmare will be over? Yes. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> not go back, not go up. <laughs> I wish I could magically just be back in the Jeep. Of course it's not strong in you, tree. <laughs> I don't use these on hikes. Well, you usually don't hike through uh, fast moving uh, water either, and it can knock you over. Right. And make you slip easy. Cheers, our first water heart. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> And the cool thing is, this late in the day again, we have it almost all to ourselves. <laughs> As I almost fall. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. It's so electric. Unexpected. Oh. Oh my god, oh my god. This feels so reckless. Turn my defenses. You got that good vibe, good vibe. You give me that good vibe all night. You get me so high. There's more we want to go back and do. You know, and, and e-biking, so much fun, but so necessary <sighs> to getting around between the hikes. It was uh, perfect. Oh, it hurt. oh, it was weird. Like sting every time it was like slapping <laughs> me. So I was like, okay, that's not gonna work. <laughs> park isn't too big so and you're allowed to e-bike in to all the places the buses can go that you can't take your car yeah to and max i think it maybe would take 20 minutes one way to get to the very end where the narrows are so right. it's so doable and it's so much fun shuttle bus tickets are hard to get sometimes you need to book those early so if you want them, yeah. make sure you try to get them about two to three weeks in advance. A lot of times you have to stand in line and wait for the shuttle. 
and wait for several of them before you can rotate through to get one. And as we've mentioned before, you're on their clock and that ends at seven o'clock at right. night. And there's still several hours of daylight left. Yes, we had a couple hours of daylight left still after the shuttles quit running. Right, and that gave us that private tour feel of the park oh is that why we were alone in the park i thought maybe you reserved the entire park for us sweetie uh, yeah anything that's what for it you, felt like it only cost a million dollars oh he's so sweet <laughs> so if you can reserve the park for your sweetie <laughs> <laughs> yep best birthday gift valentine's day gift ever <laughs> so romantic So many great hikes here in Zion National Park. Still kind of working up to the big one here. It's in the evening and trying one of the Emerald Pools hikes here. Thought about doing Angel's Landing tonight, but there's just not enough time to do it. <laughs> well, unlike the Watchman Trail, this one is paved. So far, we'll see what happens. And, and those are the views of why we hike. Awesome. Getting a little bit of elevation. That's cool. Lots of wildlife around here and they're pretty at ease with humans, but don't try to feed them or touch them. <laughs> Cool. Certainly not flowing like that right now. right here but on a hot day it would be awesome look at this how cool is that <laughs> Boy, the trail makers did such an awesome job with this. Holy cow. I don't know if you can fully take it in. Just how incredible it is. These massive, many ton boulders here. You can see a section where they probably fell out right there. Just what seems almost recent but could be many thousands of years ago. Just massive, just perched, just sitting there. I mean, it might take an earthquake to move them, but they look like they could just fall over and down, down, down. How cool is that? Calm, peaceful pool of water. Gigantic, sheer cliffs surrounding it in every direction. Well, that was super cool, running into a park employee out here and finding out more about this trail that this had been closed for a long time. They had some big rock slides and actually it might have been those boulders I was talking about. Crazy. All of that crazy steps around those big rocks and stuff is, I guess, fairly new. So it just opened up in the last month or two is what she said. A couple other things I didn't know about Zion. It is the second most visited national park in the country. It gets 3.5 million visitors a year. So I guess there's a little bit of an inherent risk hiking out here amongst all the rocks 
<laughs> I guess you never know what's gonna come down next. Oh, and also the Weeping Rock is gonna be closed for quite a while because they see another piece they think is gonna come down soon. So it's not just a matter of cleaning it up and getting it ready, it's they're waiting for more to fall down before they open it back up to the public. <laughs> well, that was a fun hike, and well, let's take a look here and see what our stats are. 5.3 miles. Pretty good. <laughs> a lot longer than I expected to go. <laughs> Look who's here, it's Alex. <laughs> My son came out for one day. <laughs> you ready to go faster? After a long day of e-biking or hiking or just exploring, adventuring here in Zion National Park, there's all kinds of places to stop over here by the creek, river here that runs through and just chill and relax. Wow, that was awesome bike so ride. Awesome. Yeah, weather is just perfect. Yes. Today. Perfect. <laughs> and I have to say, we got to share this tip about where we parked right here. Yeah, you can pass the guest visitor center. Right. Come in a little further, past the road that's closed, and there's parking along the side. Enough where the Ford F 450 actually fits. Yeah, there's not a lot of parking here. And I imagine early on in the day it might get filled up, but we came like late afternoon, two, three o'clock. Yeah, when a lot of people are going Pe home. People are leaving. Yep. And because it's there's not much here, I think people don't really think of it. And if you want to know what kind of e-bikes we have, there'll be a link down below. And they're very reasonable. They're fun. The electric e-bikes yeah. are under a thousand dollars. But you can rent them yes. as well yes. from many companies in Zion. If you're wanting different views of Zion and maybe want to stay in your vehicle, you can head out toward Kolob Reservoir and get a completely different view of Zion. There's no entrance fee to take this road. And the reservoir is kind of cool, but this, seeing the other side of Zion, is I think even more cool. So check it out. This would be a great route to take on a motorcycle if you have one. After e-biking Zion, what do we need to do? We need to go get something to eat. Get some good food. There's food. a lot of great restaurants in town. Yeah. So let's go find one. Yeah. And get some grub. Get some grub. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We actually just took this year off with our family to like. Oh, I be. love it. Yay. Super. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah we, you know, we love to hear that we also inspire people to oh, do totally. it. Yeah. yeah. Live your best life. Yeah. 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 So what do you guys think about your new lifestyle? It's fun. It's fun. Yes, it's awesome. That's yeah. Living the dream, here. man. Totally. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we just came from the top. Oh, really? Did yeah. you do Angel's Landing? Um, wow. My husband 
and my older son over there did, and we just sat at the base like a, you can walk no, up. Of course. I don't like heights. I didn't do. If you don't like heights, don't how was it? It was tiring. A good experience. <laughs> but they're only going to do it once. Yeah, we are on our way back to Oregon now for our heading back to normal life. So. Yeah. How okay. long have you been on the road? Since September. Since September. Yeah. Wow. We'll let you guys Thank get back to it. Like it nice you. to meet you oh, guys. It was great to meet you guys. It was nice yeah. meeting you guys. Yeah, have and yeah, have fun on the road. And you Thank guys you. be nice to each other. <laughs> <laughs>We are gonna try the Whiptail Grill here in Springdale, right outside of Zion National Park. The Gouda inside the Right here. Thank you. Oh, oh yum. Yum. Oh. It's really good. I mean, it's pretty, it's, I'm having a hard time cutting here. Are you really gonna record me cutting, having a hard time? It's really good. I, am, I really like this cheese. What kind of cheese is on here again? Gouda. Gouda. Oh yeah, bacon, Gouda. It's really good. We got it bunless. But you know what's really good on burgers? That we were just talking about it. Peanut butter. Have you ever had peanut butter on a burger? Let me know if you have. <laughs> it's really good, surprisingly. I know some people don't like it, but I do like I burgers. I think it's wrong. <laughs> I think there, there are a lot of um, burger places that have like really interesting ingredients. And when I was, I can't remember where I was, but I got something called um, the Elvis, and it had peanut butter and banana on it. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. So ever since then, if I see peanut butter on a menu with burgers, I'm in. It's good. So for all of the activities in Zion, they recommend either really early, try to get early bus tickets or go in early to beat the crowds yes. and the heat yes. of the day or later. Yeah, we but, did the later. Right. We're, We're not, the night owls though. We're yeah. not morning people. Yeah, so we're not we, early risers. Yeah, so we did do later and it worked out perfectly for us. Um, both Angels Landing, e-biking in and out, and doing the Narrows. Yes, and uh, if you are new to us or you haven't watched our other Zion videos, we'll put links to those below. But right, Angels Landing, very similar. Us hiking out in the early evening, we saw almost nobody else. Yep. So <laughs> nice. Our so private tour nice. yep. of Zion. Yep. And a self-guided cool. private tour. <laughs> right. That maybe went a little late. We were e-biking out as it was starting to get dark. It was a little cold for me. <laughs> cold and a little dark. And as we've been told, there's mountain lions in the park. <laughs> We've been told. I didn't know that then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We didn't find that out till. Thankfully, we were already done yeah. with our I late did night. Have a conversation with a turkey, though. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sheree knows how to speak gobble gobble. I do. I can speak gobble. Who knew? <laughs> I didn't know until I started speaking. It just came out and it talked back. <laughs> I, I'm a gobble whisperer. <laughs> if you guys are new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you can catch all of our adventures like this. Or if you're into RV and camping, we have lots of how-to videos as well. as well yeah so and uh, if you like this video give it a big pink thumbs up <laughs> or not a pink thumbs up but if it is pink make it as hot pink as you can there you go <laughs> let us know what you thought of this video in the comments would you visit zion or have you what did you think of it so let us know down in the comments yeah so uh, for now, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you in the next video. Next video coming and up. And remember, enjoy, enjoy your, your journey. journey. Are you like getting ready to jump on me? Just following me along? Is that right? <laughs> right. Look to the left. There's people right there. There's people up on the right. They're moving. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so let's beep that one out, huh? <laughs> no hitchhikers. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like dinner. <laughs> They're light right now. All the way down. We're so thirsty. Right We're so thirsty. <laughs> okay, I heard one kid over there say, okay, we've seen it. Can we go now? <laughs> <laughs> That's not you, Alex, right?
Each year, rangers respond to 250 medical incidents in Zion. Most dehydration and overexertion. Yeah, well that's better than falling. <laughs> so what you're saying is, this is after Angel's Landing right here? <laughs> yeah, we We're hiking up those? Way. Yeah. That looks like real rock climbing, if you could get a permit to do that. <laughs> Free solo. <laughs> you ready? I think so, wait a minute, okay. We love our electric XP bikes. They're the perfect companion to RV life. We've got the XP trike, a newer model here uh, that is great if you want the stability of a trike and maybe for people with a large RV or a toy hauler that might go great or the more powerful electric XP 3.0. Our favorite is the XP Lite for RV life. That's the smaller one here and it's the lightest and look how compact it folds up to. So this can go, we, we actually fit both of these in the back of the Jeep. That's how small these are. So the XP Lite is what we would recommend for RV life, but no matter what kind of e-bike you're interested in, you'll always get the best price by scanning our QR code right here. Go to Electric E-Bikes, check them out, and we'll see you on the bike trail. Well, Utah has been a surprise around every corner. I, I think it's like our favorite state. Wow, Rainbow Point does not disappoint. This is super awesome. It's not really a state, it's another planet. <laughs> it's like not even a planet, it's like another universe. give you some information about this park and what to expect out of it. Go in the middle. Oh. Try to go in the middle if you can. And there's that. <laughs> what <laughs> is that? Utah has been a surprise around every corner. I, I think it's like our favorite state. I, I think so too. <laughs> you know, we continue to get blown away and actually it's not really a state, it's another planet. It is, it's like another planet. It feels like a completely different place. And just, yeah, ignore that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not even a planet, it's like another universe. But wow, doing the big five in Utah, the big five national parks. Right, continuing our journey. We did a lot in Zion. Yes. And here we go to Bryce Canyon National Park. And we wanna give you some information about this park and what to expect out of it. Yeah, and how you can make the most out of a quick half day visit or to spend several days. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.life. When we were young, we burned like summer suns. Our fears at bay, we made our own way, no stop. Good, how are you? Good. Would you like a map? Sure. Thank you. We turned the page, our story became a world brand new. You and I So if you want to catch all of our videos on the Big Five and our Zion adventures, 
make sure you subscribe and ring that little bell and you'll get notified. <laughs> do, I do little motions with that. Do you like that? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we can dance too with all these bugs around us. We're, we're going to be doing a lot of dancing here. <laughs> That is not Bryce back there. <laughs> no, but there's videos coming up on it's this. It's coming up. And it's epic. <laughs> yeah, the campsites keep getting better. They keep getting and better. better. And we love sharing the GPS coordinates with you so you can also camp here and let us know if you do. Right, totally. If you caught one of our previous videos, we were camping in the Grand... What's this? A butterfly. What's... Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. So if you missed our last video, that's where we were camping while we went to Bryce Canyon yes. National Park. And we were staying in Grand Staircase Escalante, Escalante National Monument. Yes. Yeah, eight days, another amazing campsite. It was so there. nice and private. I really enjoyed totally. that. Totally. Yeah. Oh, they're so cute. Hi. Hi. What you looking at? Hey! Hi! What are you doing? Hello! <laughs> Hello! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Well, more proof that Utah is on another planet. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Guess where we are? Bryce Canyon. <laughs> yeah, Bryce Canyon National Park. Our first time. Yeah, here, another ever. park, another national park that we have never been to. Right. Uh, and don't really know what to expect. So it's really fun doing it the first time. Right. One of the big four, big five national parks in Utah. And yeah, I think we're just gonna do a drive-through right now, yeah. pretty much, but. Wow. Wow. Yeah, different planet. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing about all the national parks in Utah, they're all a little bit or a lot different. They are, yes. And how you see them can be very, very different. Right, so the cool thing about Bryce is we went, opted for the half day yes. trip. Yes. We didn't do any hikes. We hit the highlights. And it's an easy drive through. Right, well it was perfect for me and the timing was perfect because I was still dealing with broken thumb and it was swelling when I was walking so I was keeping it up most of the time. So I was, we were able to drive through and I was able to get out, go to the railing, check things out, get back in the car. So it was really easy which made a great point for people that may be handicapped, can't walk long distances great easy park to go through in a half day right and even some of the stopovers in the park and unlike zion you can drive your vehicle all the way through there are buses as well if you want to take the shuttle but you can stop and see the view from yes. most of these overlooks and you, you don't even have to get out yes or if you do it's like a few steps right and you're right there So uh, one of the, I guess, cool things about Bryce is these things called hoodoos. Hoodoos. <laughs> like, why is that like voodoos? <laughs> right. <laughs> and a hoodoo is like a, like a pinnacle or a spire that's kind of stayed in place from the erosion and the ground and everything around it kind of, you know, erodes away. Right. And there's... <laughs> What he, is that? He just came to say hi. He was up there and he wanted to be on camera. He's huge. His antlers are three times as big as his... Oh, Tom, what are you doing? <gasps> He's friendly. <laughs> just say hi to everyone. Is that what ended up in my face last night? I don't know. <laughs> Do it sideways so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> and he's like, he you, is, you no, <laughs> no, he is digging though, like where he's at right now. Yeah. So just kind of hang he, on to him while we talk. <laughs> but the hoodoos are really cool and there's tons of them. Yeah, it's like the park is full of them where some of these overlooks and it's just vast valley canyon yeah full of them yeah and, you and can if it's like if each hoodoo represents like a person it's like a huge crowd you're looking into i think you could probably let him go now <laughs> okay i'll give him well, a kiss ready okay. <laughs> he, might, he might turn into a handsome prince <laughs> i guess you don't need a handsome prince huh no i got one already <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he doesn't oh, jump in my face oh. Wow, Rainbow Point does not disappoint. This is super awesome. What a view up here. Elevation 9,115 feet. That's some elevation. <laughs> and I didn't have to hike it. <laughs> the Jeep did all the work. And when you're looking down into Bryce Canyon, you see these ants, but they're actually people on the hiking trails yes. down there. The hiking trails look really cool too. And I would have liked to have had some time to do that. But totally. We, yeah, it wasn't something I could do and then we didn't have time. We so. just made it a quick day trip, but also there are bike trails yes. there as well. So if you wanna take your e-bike uh, or rent them, uh, you can certainly do that. We've got links below to our e-bikes that we use if you want to check them out. They have been awesome, awesome. for the national parks. Yes. You can take your RV in there, but there are points that you're limited to only 20 feet. Oh, and the rock tunnel. The rock tunnel. <laughs> that freaked us out before we went through there. It freaks me out being behind him because I'm like, <gasps> Are we gonna make it through there? Well, and the funny thing about that, we digress into RV talk sometimes, but they warned you 13.5, I think. I think that was the warning sign. But it's not at the top, it's on the side. When, when we go through, because we're about 13.5, we clear it by feet. Right, but we were too hesitant initially, so we actually found a place on this side to stay overnight until we got in for more information on it because the signs ahead of time are kind of scary. Oh. Keep rolling. Try to go in the middle if you can. Yeah, you're clear, clear. How close was it? Not bad. So don't bring your big rig in there. <laughs> Unless you're camping there, but we kind of checked out the campsites and yeah. they looked fairly short. Yeah, I, I don't think we would feel comfortable taking ours in there, but we are extra large. Right, but so. there, yeah, there's a couple campsites right inside the park you can check for availability. And they seem really nice. They, they do if you want to be really close and uh, just backing up about biking. Red Canyon's not that far away from there yes. and you can actually bike through Red Canyon all the way into Bryce. And it's gorgeous. Oh it's yeah. It's like breathtaking. Like, totally. Wow, like what planet are we on now? Right. Uh, if you've got a shorter RV, feel free to drive all the way through. Less than 20 feet, you're fine. If you're bigger than that, you should take a smaller vehicle if you're gonna drive through it but or the shuttle. Definitely worth it to go that way. So how much is it to get in? Well, pretty standard for the national parks, $35 per vehicle for a seven day pass or it's $40 for an annual pass. We love the National Park Pass. We get so much value out of that. Right, where a couple of individual visits would completely pay for that. Yes. Plus, if you're military or former military, it's completely free to get one. And the senior citizens, how much is that one? That is only $20 a year or $80 for a lifetime 
which is super cool. Super cool. So highly recommend that, but now you know what the fees are to get into Bryce. We can be life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. I'm done living life with the lights out. Die with my own doubts. Be free with me. Be free. We hope you enjoyed our quick tour through Bryce Canyon National Park. Again, check out all of our videos about the Utah National yes. Park. And let us know if you go and what your experience is so you can help other people that are reading the comments. Exactly. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to us. It's looking better. <laughs> yeah, it's not pink anymore. <laughs> no, it's getting some air now. <laughs> <laughs> if you like our videos, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell. That way you can catch all of them and the bugs that want to be they want to be included videos too. as well they're welcome so <laughs> again let us know what you thought of the video in the comments and you uh, guys remember enjoy your, your journey. journey in the grand what's this? a butterfly Tell me so I can help you with this. Uh, okay, it's just one of it's just a big mouthful. Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. Oh yes, that so is a mouthful. If you missed, I didn't know you were trying to get all of that out at once, but look, good for you. I, I'll uh, I'll do that again. Props again. to Tom. And we. There's uh, a fly on the lens. Get off of there. <laughs> the flies out here. Yeah. Do you have any almonds in my teeth? No, I That's think I'm good. good. No, you're good. <laughs> Almost like deer, but not. I, I think they're deer, but... They don't look like deer. <laughs> they look weird. <laughs> that is $80. And... Ah! Ah! T <laughs> what? Well, leave me alone. I have to... Wait, wait, wait. Ah, get them off. Oh, okay, I won't let them land. Are those the horse flies that sting? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, he, he got my leg a little bit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they discovered us. Hey, honey, come out and check out this view. I think I'll pass. <laughs> Why? It's it awesome out scary. here. It's <laughs> scary. Looks oh. like another angel's landing. <laughs> Except it's devil's backbone. I'm stuck in a maze. <laughs> <laughs> when you find my bones scattered about here somewhere, let Cherie know. Oceans we parted, mountains yet to climb. Never had that happen before. It's yeah. just touching. This is not the hike I intended to do today. Oh, and it just gets better. The stars I can pull them down. This particular boondocking spot. It's amazing, but it's another one of our favorites. In front of me, they weren't kidding. Is how it all unfolds from the sunrise to the dead of night. I'll never let you go. Great meeting you! <laughs> it seems good luck's finally on my side. She pulls the sheets off of me every night. Whispers my name, tells the song to. If you've watched our channel long enough, you know that tires are a thing and there's good and bad news. The bad news is we have a tire issue. The good news is I caught it before it caused a problem. So let's go take a look at, at the issue. And I'm not gonna change it out myself. I've got a service for that, so. 
they're gonna come out here and take care of it. This tire is separating right there. It is bowed way out and in bad, bad shape. Well, that's gonna be a, a record for quickness, how typically oh. I wait like an hour, an hour and a half. Oh, really? So it's right there, it's totally coming apart. So that was like, what, seconds? Probably. From going? Oh man. Probably. It's about to throw that shred off there. Jeez, the ugly white tire. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Really? Yeah, even when you messed up and dropped the thing under a tree or something you did. <laughs> and where is the wife? He's got the wife in. Yes he do. Uh, He's got her here. She she's coming. She's bringing food. She's bringing food. <laughs> yeah. Feed the man. Feed the man. You know, okay, enjoy your journey. <laughs> he just couldn't, he just had to put me on this door thing. <laughs> I was excited to see Get out of here. Anita, right? Anita, Anita. right. Anita, Anita, right there, recognize me. So, great meeting you. Thank you, happy trail. Hello, Rogers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you like that honey it feels so good <laughs> yeah our first fire in this spot here mm -mm. so it's our first fire in a long time actually yeah since grand canyon yeah so it's too cold for me to sit out there grand canyon right and it had been cold here in the evenings this is kind of our first evening yeah it's 72 and it's been windy and it's been really windy so we're just but i'm cold sitting out here now it's 72 with a fire <laughs> so it's a rare occasion for me right the wind died down which is good and important for a fire the firewood was a little harder to get here it's picked clean right here we're on blm land uh i think we're technically in the grand staircase national monument technically but it is blm land and so, it's so nice and quiet and peaceful here. Oh yeah, the view. The sunsets. Here. The sunsets. And the are sunsets. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, it has been phenomenal here, and yeah, I'll have to get a beverage and join you there. Utah and we're still in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. Wow that's a mouthful. 
on my own today just getting a little escape from the RV and a good hard workout this is a mouthful as well dry fork peekaboo and spooky slot canyon hikes so been looking forward to doing some slot canyons and the cool thing about this is it was a long like 45 minute Jeep ride off of bumpy bumpy roads and actually it was a fun ride to get out here but this is going to be pretty sweet. I am thinking that is one of them right there. <laughs> Looks like I got a long ways down. It's a long hike today. <laughs> So that's the entrance. Ooh. Sandstorm out here. Holy crap. That was scary. That was way scarier than Angel's Landing. Oh, I guess that's the payoff right there. Jeez. <laughs> This is not the hike I intended to do today. Have you ever seen such a narrow passage? <laughs> oh, and it just gets better. Oh, oh man, they weren't kidding. Gonna have to lose the backpack here and carry it. Snake through there, man, holy cow. This thing just doesn't end. I'm stuck in a maze. <laughs> when you find my bones scattered about here somewhere, let Cherie know. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that experience in the Peekaboo Canyon, the trail goes around to uh, Spooky Slot Canyon, and Peekaboo was spooky. So I am taking the trail around, and actually, I was told by some people that uh, Spooky was even narrower. So, and I barely got through Peekaboo. So. I don't know if that's the easiest way to go in or not, but I can't imagine going down that. I, I almost didn't make it up there by myself. If you have people going with you, then that will definitely make a difference. It was easier walking out the other way. I would not recommend it for small children, uh, or people that are, you know, afraid, claustrophobic, small spaces and it was a challenge for me i did not expect that kind of a challenge but what a thrill uh there's the dry fork narrow slot canyon entrance right there getting a little bit of an echo and like i mentioned before the spooky slot canyon i don't have enough gas in the tank to do those today some people probably do all three of them in one day <laughs> Well, it kind of takes me out near the exit anyway, so it's kind of tempting to just take it and see how it goes. <laughs>
another reason why I love the All Trails app right there. I was going to keep going down the slot canyon like a lot of other people do, but right here by our heart <laughs> that I wrote Cherie and my name in, that is the exit right there. last sketchy part of this hike <laughs> Well, <laughs> bonus slot canyon, dry fork slot canyon. It's got a few, two larger step ups that are a little bit difficult, but nothing like peekaboo. I verified that spooky slot canyon has an eight foot drop in one area. So besides it being really tight. So, oh my gosh. Oh, I made it. Well, the Jeep's right there. One of the last vehicles in the parking lot. I didn't have to use a headlamp this time. Oh my gosh, but the sunset. Oh, sunsets out here are the best. Just going out for a little scenic drive today on Hell's Backbone. Oh my gosh, the views. It's scaring the crap out of Cherie though. <laughs> Look at that, it's so cool. Hey honey, come out and check out this view. I think I'll pass. <laughs> Why, it's awesome it out scary. here. scary. <laughs> I'll stay right here where I'm safe. Looks oh. like another angel's landing. <laughs> Except it's devil's backbone. Right, what is all this heaven and hell stuff, right? <laughs> I don't know, but you can have it. Uh, okay. Day number eight, and we are leaving this particular boondocking spot. I have to say, it's amazing, but it's another one of our favorites. We scored a spot here where, I mean, there's, there's an airstream. You can see he's 100, 150 feet away over there we had this complete unobstructed view here there's a smaller campsite down there but nobody came and joined us down there and there was firewood available although it was a ways away to go get uh, and then i didn't use it all so i'm gonna leave some here <laughs> but i mean there's other spots easier to get to you know there's other campers out here but uh, we're all distance pretty far. So, and even down this BLM road, way down there, it's a rough road. I took the Jeep out there to do some hiking, but it's, it's really rough. And there's other spots, some spots up on cliffs and small cliffs uh, where you can really get away. Only downside to this only downside and it was magnified by the wind it's not very windy now but it is has been super windy most days and the dirt the dirt has gotten everywhere it's very sandy here so that's really the only downside and gonna have to shake that mat out so lots of cleaning in the RV, dusting, that is the only negative here. And oh my gosh, the AT&T signal on our PepWave system has been awesome here. So this, I mean, that's huge for those of us that have to work on the road still, but it's not managed by the National uh, Forest Service, it's managed by the BLM. 
uh, Bureau of Land Management. So, not sure what all that means, but you know, basically you can stay, uh, I think it's 16 days here is what's allowed. We're only making it to day eight, time to move on and get going. But if you're in the middle of Utah, come and check it out. Let's go, huh? Let's do it, yep. Yeah, and we're gonna go meet some friends. Right, well, Tonight, camp yes. with some friends, that'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, Chad and Tara are not far away. Yeah. And of changing lanes, if you don't follow them. One of the maps says it's gonna be over five hours and one says over three hours. So I don't know which route we're taking or if we're gonna be able to make it. Tara goes to bed at seven o'clock, so time's ticking. Maybe it'll be breakfast in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. Never had that happen before. It's just touching. So I'm gonna have to back up and try something else here. Let us know if you've done any of these hikes or if you would dare do one of these hikes down in the comments. So if you liked it, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're brand new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. We do some of these crazy hikes like this every once in a while and lots of other adventures plus all of our RV how-tos and mistakes and things like that. So thanks for watching guys and so long. We'll catch you next time and remember to enjoy your journey. So long. Hi guys. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Just navigating. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Man, I did not expect this hike to be so challenging. Holy cow. Already adding to my owies here. Jeez. Can you see down there? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting a lot more views on this road than that off road. I think the off road is just for people that just want to, I don't know, torture themselves. <laughs> Am I there yet? <sighs> oh, down go the glasses. That's right. I hiked through that. <laughs> Had to suck in the gut. Hey. Hey. I got my stitches removed. Yay. Yeah, got something else. Really? Pie? Stopped at a Mexican food truck. <laughs> Maybe you'd like some lunch. Oh, lunch would be great. Thanks for watching, guys. And oh, gosh, I still got a couple mile hike out of here. <laughs> what's up? I mean, what's going on here? Is that a hearse? What was that? Maybe you're right. <laughs> it looked like you had room for a gasket yeah. in there. <laughs> Weird. So long, peekaboo. <laughs> I don't think I need to do that one again either. Today we're going to explore the surface of Mars. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. I tell you, Utah continues to blow us away and makes us think Utah is not on this planet. Only get one life, I want to make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Hey, darling. I love it when it's me and you. Well, this is the first national park that's had this awesome of a Jeep path. But, oh my gosh. So cool out here. You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright It literally looks like the bottom of the ocean or what it may have been the bottom of the ocean because they, it does resemble reef. the
We are continuing our travels through Utah. Right, hitting the big five. Again. It blows us away. One of our favorite states that is not a state. It's, it's like, like another planet. Right, totally crazy cool. Yes. This time we are covering Capitol Reef National Park. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.life. This one is Capitol, Capitol Reef. Reef National Park. It is such a bizarre, interesting park. It is, and the geology here, I will do my best to tell you about what it is without flubbing it up. It literally looks like the bottom of the ocean because they, it does resemble reef. So I'm gonna actually read exactly what it is so you know. It's a water pocket fold basically a geologic wrinkle on the earth and this is located in south central utah in the heart of red rock company capitol reef national park is a hidden treasure filled with cliffs canyons domes and bridges in this water pocket fold a geologic monocline extending almost 100 miles wow 100 miles i didn't know that right it's narrow but it extends 100 it miles narrow. it's and an easy drive through and right. so many stopping points where you can stop and read about the different sections and totally so you can drive through it uh, there are no buses to take there so you do need to take your own vehicle i think there are some tour operators that will do that and if you want to go off-roading i did <laughs> some awesome jeeping again i couldn't there. do it <laughs> i had to get out and wait in the waiting area while he where there were some benches while he did his off-roading even that was too much <laughs> This is the first national park that's had this awesome of a Jeep path. And there's regular vehicles out here too, but I consider it a Jeep trail, but oh my gosh, so cool out here. <laughs> there are some really cool hikes there as well. We made this another quick half day yep. trip yep. through there to check it out. Uh, we saw the petroglyphs. Yes. That were Super very cool. Cool. Yes. And kind of look like aliens. Totally. <laughs> like, do the people back then know something we don't know? Right. Mm, perhaps. <laughs> Speaking of aliens, we need right. to throw out that we're getting ready to go to. Right. Or we've been to Skinwalker Ranch. We have a lot recorded from a lot of locals. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll give you a little preview of that right now. But if you haven't watched Skinwalker Ranch, you can check that out on Prime or I think- History uh, Channel. Right, uh, you can get access to that, but there's two seasons out two now. Two seasons, about eight to 10 uh, episodes per season. So it's not very long and it's fascinating. It's, it's very cool and we camped right by the spooky mesa where the, all the- Right, the mesa that nobody can get to. We got special permission to go up there. We had a great time. Today we're going to explore the surface of Mars. I tell you, Utah continues to blow us away. Actually, we're in Capitol Reef National Park in Utah. Super cool, nice drive through National Park. Another windy day, how about that? When I rest, met, I never knew That I could feel this way And it's kind of strange Don't even know your name
why do they call it Capitol Reef? Actually, the early pioneer settlers that came through there thought that the large white domes reminded them of the Capitol, Capitol building, building in Washington, D.C. Right. Interesting. But uh, yeah, like you mentioned before, that some of the formations remind you of a reef. Yes. Like it like should a be coral underwater. Reef. Yes. So there you go. Capitol Reef National Park. And we are not in Utah anymore. And this is not Not a green Utah screen. Back here. It's, yeah, this is real. Another amazing uh, free camp spot. That we cannot wait to share with you and give you the GPS coordinates. Yes, absolutely. But while we were visiting Capitol Reef National Park, we were staying in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. So check that video out. We'll yep. link to that below. But that was another amazing campsite. It's only $20 per vehicle. And actually that covers you for seven days. Uh, but as we've said in other videos, the National Park Pass is the way to go. $80 a year for us, but there's free ones for military and previous military, uh, completely free. $20 annual passes for seniors yeah. or $80 lifetime senior passes. Great values. Totally. And, uh, you know, this park was no exception right. to that. Yeah. So unique, so cool. And you can also e-bike here if you want to, but there are not specific e-bike trails. You're limited to staying on the roads and we wouldn't really recommend e-biking here. Personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that, but you know, there are bikers out there. So that we, would be an individual choice. Yeah, we don't like to share the road with regular vehicles when tourists are like, oh, look at that, you know, and they're driving. <laughs> Yeah, I, they're I not paying attention. We saw a lot of that in uh, Moab and Arches Park. Oh, right. We saw a lot of that. That's also coming up. So be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss that. But yes, we're seeing a lot of people biking in some of the places that we would choose not to. So it's up to you and your safety feeling, biking expertise. We like the paved trails. <laughs> yeah. And Or like Zion National Park, the part you could e-bike with just the buses. Right. And the buses were not allowed to pass you. Right. You for had to, safety. Right. We had to stop for them to pass. So it felt very safe. I felt very comfortable with that. Right. And if you want to know what e-bikes we use, uh, we'll put a link down below. They are awesome. The electric uh, XP and yeah. step through. So much fun. Very cool. But you can also rent e-bikes almost everywhere. Right. now yeah. and they are a lot of fun plus you get some exercise yes absolutely like you don't always use the pedal assist you actually ride the bike and get exercise but if you come up on a hill that's a little challenging you get that little assist and then you can keep going and that's what i love about them right and the ones we have the price point is better than any we've seen so far yes so we absolutely. highly recommend those So if you still don't want to pay to get in, there are a lot of the sites on that scenic Highway 24 going through. Uh, we actually drove the RV going to the one of our next spots through yeah. there. The petroglyphs are right off of there. It's beautiful, but we highly recommend that scenic drive. Yes, the scenic drive. Right, and that is something uh, that, yeah, just it's short again and so many interesting things to see there's a book <laughs> oh yeah that, that was a horse <sighs> fly oh, make sure he got off of you yeah. i got him but he yep there he is <laughs> thank you sweetie you're my hero
We hope you enjoyed our journey through Capitol Reef National Park. You'll have to let us know if you visit and what interesting things you found out about it or even if you've already been there. It, totally. And if you're brand new here, uh, hit that subscribe button. That way you can check out all of our other videos. We've done videos on Zion National Park, Bryce Canyon, and a lot of other adventures. So check them out. Yep. Right, totally. And for now, we're gonna totally. say goodbye. <laughs> totally. And <laughs> can't get over that. Huh? Totally. Totally so, awesome. Remember, totally <laughs> enjoy your, your journey. journey. This was another one of our favorite free campsites. We enjoyed beautiful sunsets. The view. The sunsets. Here. The sunsets. And the are sunsets. Incredible. Yeah. Mountain views. And Tom got to hike some sketchy slot canyons. I took a pass on that. Oh, oh man. They weren't kidding. Gonna have to lose the backpack here and carry it. This is not the hike I intended to do today. Have you ever seen such a narrow passage? But it's time to leave the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument area of Utah. Utah is one of our favorite states. So many incredible things to do and see here. When I'll be coming home Then I'll be at your door We are continuing our journey to explore the mighty five national parks. Now we're on our way to the Moab area and to explore both Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. We are also free camping right next to Arches National Park. Some people don't want us to share this, but we're gonna give you the exact GPS directions to our campsite, just a couple of miles from Arches National Park. Highway 12 in Utah is beautiful. In fact, it's been called America's most scenic road. However, it is very scary. One section of Highway 12 is called the Hogback. The Hogback section is so scary that some travelers will not drive on that section of the road. The Hogback has steep drop-offs on both sides of the road, but with incredible scenery. I'm scared just following Tom in the RV on regular roads, but this? Can I just close my eyes? <laughs> it's different following behind the RV all the time. You see all the action in the back that most people driving the RV never see. to the Moab area we found out that we could be crossing paths with our friends Chad and Tara from Changing Lanes. So we decided to camp together and catch up for one night in Green River, Utah. I have tray envy. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> this can go from zero to like 20 PSI. So I can go in full flamethrower mode under there if I need to. <laughs> and seriously, it goes. Oh, wow. So it's really windy. If it's really windy, I just crank it up into like flamethrower mode. Let's just smile. Okay. You, know, you know how we do it. With, and then I'll make a still. <laughs> We don't even have to look Friends. at the camera because we all have sunglasses. Yay. No, Tom doesn't. Tom has to pay attention. Oh, are we are we doing sunglasses? Impromptu. <laughs> Jeez. Get with the program. <laughs> Hi. Impromptu. Hey. Yeah. Awesome. Great to see you guys again. This was awesome. Let's Last minute meetups are awesome. We said goodbye to our friends as we headed out in separate directions. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that yeah. was fun for a last minute improv.
up to. I think we ended up. up chatting for what hours last night, hours and an last hour night or so and this morning. Is... And I think that's kind of cool with uh, friends that you meet on the road because you can kind of see where you are Run at the into time. Run people and... last minute. Right. It's social hour. Yeah. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> and you get to meet in different places all over the country. Right. <laughs> After weeks of camping in the desert, Tom decided to give the RV, truck, and Jeep a quick wash at the convenient car wash right next to the RV park. Then we got back on the road to Moab. We are headed for the Willow Springs Dispersed Camping Area. When you are boondocking or free camping on government land, there are no reservations. We actually have no idea what campsite we're going to go find. But we made it our intention that whatever site we find, it will be perfect. Sure enough, we found this amazing elevated campsite with spectacular 360 degree mountain views. Tom's mountain tribe would be so happy. Our next challenge, can Tom's truck get our huge RV up this hill and into the campsite without destroying the kayaks or bottoming out the RV? <gasps> Is this gonna work? Well, maybe I'll have to back up and it, it wasn't too bad. I'm just gonna have to not lose any speed as I come up. Come on, you got this. You got this. Oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Excellent. Why did we wash the RV? Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know Moab is a small town in eastern Utah and it's a gateway to the massive red rock formations and arches in Canyonlands National Parks. There are mesas and buttes carved by the green and Colorado rivers, Native American rock art, and dinosaur tracks. Moab is a popular base for mountain bikers who ride the extensive network of trails, including the Slick Rock Trail, and for off-roaders who come for the annual Moab Jeep Safari. I wonder if my pavement princess Jeep would make the cut. The Moab area of Utah is well known among RVers for an abundance of free boondocking campsites. We found this one by using the Dirt Pro app. We camped here before they started charging any fees. The most recent reviews on the Dirt app say that this area is being transitioned into a state park and is now $15 per night. Still not a bad price for being so close to the Arches National Park in Moab. But there is still plenty of free camping in the area that you find using the Dirt Pro app. You can get a free 30-day trial of the Dirt Pro app by using our link in the description. Plus, you can find the exact GPS location of this campsite. Be sure to subscribe because coming up, we will skip the long lines and sneak in the back door, the secret back door to Arches National Park. But our solution isn't for everyone. Why are you smiling? <laughs>
I know why you're smiling. <laughs> He's bad. We're going to Arches and I have never been there. We are taking this road right here that we've got this amazing free camping spot on into Arches to avoid the crowds. We'll show you a secret way to get into Arches National Park and avoid the crowds I'm today. I'm a little concerned about that. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.life. After Tom's truck struggled to pull our huge RV up this hill. You got this, you got it, you got it, you got it. Oh my gosh! Oh. Oh. <laughs> we finally got settled into our new campsite. Well, we made it up here, boondocking, dry camping, near Moab and yeah what a great spot it's busy out here for sure but we scored this spot up here that we have to ourselves right now kind of on top of a little hill and the views I mean are just great out this direction you don't see any other RVs this is kind of where a lot of people have packed in some of the smaller RVs are kind of more up against that uh, the rock ledge over there. I guess get some protection from the wind because it's <laughs> my strap is going around. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunset here. It's great. Wind is dying down. It's starting to cool off. So yeah, can't wait to see arches, canyon land some jeeping out here so much to do and see wow what a gorgeous view can we just stay in this spot forever huh <laughs> what well, are you excited about today <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> We are going to go to Arches National Park today. We are going to actually take this dirt road that we're boondocking on. It's kind of a secret dirt road and... Can I come down? <laughs> today we're going to Arches National Park. Yeah, I am excited because it is my first time. That was so awkward. Why are you smiling? <laughs> I know why you're smiling. <laughs> He's bad. You are so excited to be doing what we're doing today, right? <laughs> yes, we are going. Where are we going again? <laughs> we're going to Arches, and I have never been there. And it's been ages since I've been there, so I don't rem remember a ton about it, but it's one of the most popular national parks in Utah. The other cool thing is we are taking this road right here that we've got this amazing free camping spot on into Arches to avoid the crowds. We'll show you a secret way to get into Arches National Park and avoid the crowds I'm today. I'm a little concerned about that after... After yesterday? After yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't seen our Canyonlands video yet on how we went the back door into Canyonlands, you might want to check that out. This is not going to be like that. Okay. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> that was a little of a, yeah. Scary. Heart, heart racer. <laughs> scariest cheap ride yet. Yeah, so. I, I don't like stuff like that. So. <laughs> All right, shall we hit it? Yeah, let's do All right, do it. let's go. All right. Can you believe the cars 
regular vehicles out here. I feel like we're struggling in a Jeep. <laughs> right, so it's a secret way to get in, but you gotta have an off-road vehicle because it says four by four required, although we are seeing some street vehicles. Uh, yeah. I mean, take your own chances, whatever, <laughs> but we don't recommend it. Yeah, it's it's more serious off-roading than we did even yesterday. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, but there's no drop-off cliff. So no drop-off. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I can feel the sun on my skin. Ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, got a little bit of shade, a little cloudy, it's windy, yeah, even though it's hot. You can't come to Arches and not do this. It's such an iconic arch here. It's what it's known for. So The delicate arch. Yeah, and I got major FOMO thinking I was going to miss it, so I decided I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, like it's like a straight up and straight down. Major yeah. elevation, three mile hike. Yeah, it looks like you're gonna hike up this rock here. You can see people in the distance over there. You see the ants up there? Yeah, they're like little ants. Shall we go join them? Yeah, let's join them. All right. <laughs> they could have made this a whole lot easier. Seriously, <laughs> look at those people up there. <laughs> yeah, gotta go way up there. Arches National Park contains the highest density of natural arches in the world, over 2,000 of them. These include the massive red-hued delicate arch in the east, the long thin landscape arch in Devil's Garden to the north, and other geological formations like Balanced Rock, towering over the desert landscape in the middle of the park. Arches is the 17th most visited national park in the U.S. and is visited by 1.6 million people every year. You could spend over a week trying to see all there is to see at Arches National Park. We only have one day, so we are hiking to Delicate Arch today, one of the most popular sites to see in the park. So I said I wasn't going to be doing death-defying hikes anymore, but as I look forward, I'm starting to wonder what I'm doing up here. <laughs> yeah. And it's quite the hike up here. <laughs> Don't get so close to the edge. That's not it. <laughs> That's not it. It's a baby. Oh, there's a soundtrack. Is this the uh, custom arch mix we're playing? <laughs> <laughs> the arch mix. Ah, <laughs> oh, nice. Hey. Yeah, beautiful. Money shot. I don't think it would have been that scary of a hike. If it wasn't so windy, it feels like a hundred miles wind, an hour. Yeah, it's gonna pick you up and toss you off the edge. Yeah, here. you <laughs> went down time. there. This is as close as I get. I didn't want to go down there. I'm not a fan yeah. of this wind, and I'm not a fan of ledges. I've seen a few hats go flying. A I water have ball, too. Yeah. Water bottle go down to you the bottom. You almost lost my phone. You were holding it tight enough. The wind grabbed it. Oh, oh my uh -oh. gosh! Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> hey, Today. On our hike back down from Delicate Arch, we decided to take the trail to see the petroglyphs. The Ute Indian tribe carved these petroglyphs sometime between 1650 and 1850 AD. The stylized horse and rider surrounded by bighorn sheep and dog-like animals is typical of Ute Indian artwork. Close to the petroglyphs are the old ruins of Wolf Ranch. John Wesley Wolf settled here in 1898 with his oldest son, Fred. 
The Wolfs built a one-room cabin, a corral, and a small dam across Salt Wash, enough to support a few cattle. For more than a decade, they lived alone on the remote ranch. This is the fiery furnace. I guess it's named after the uh, kind of reddish tinge when the sun starts to set, makes it look like a furnace. It's not actually on fire or really hot. And you can actually hike back in here, but a permit is required. Nice how the red rocks are set up against the snow peaked mountains over there. Pretty cool. Dinosaur tracks here right outside of Arches National Park. You can kind of see how they walked up the hill. If it was a hill back then, I don't know. <laughs> right there. Right there. Right there. And the right way to celebrate exploring Arches National Park is grilling some steak. <sighs> Hard to see those. And a near full moon, you can see the campfires all around. Be sure to subscribe because coming up, we will take the Jeep on one of the scariest roads in the U.S., the White Rim Road into Canyonlands National Park. Here comes the tow truck. Famous, like, it's a fairly old movie now. Yeah. This was the point. A ball, a ball, and that one. Cherie, they're playing basketball. Come <laughs> on. How do I telescope? <laughs> I don't know how to telescope. I want one of these. <gasps> I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.live. loving our free campsite right next to Arches National Park and Moab, Utah. We have amazing 360 degree mountain views. Now this is RV camping. Having solar and lithium batteries have been a game changer for long boondocking trips. In our last video, we took the secret and controversial back entrance to Arches National Park and hiked to the famous Delicate Arch. We're going to Arches and I have never been there. We are taking this road right here that we've got this amazing <laughs> free camping spot on into Arches to avoid the crowds. Today we are exploring Canyonlands National Park but we are not taking the main entrance to this national park either. We heard about a crazy and scary dirt road and another secret back entrance to explore this national park. Here comes the tow truck. 
what has Tom got me into again? On our way to Canyonlands National Park, we found another petroglyph historic site right next to the Colorado River. So, how on earth did they get the petroglyphs way up there? That's what, and that's like 20, 25 feet high. So, Cherie, can you interpret? <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> likes to play with upside down triangles and they have cute little puppies. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like it's some kind of like antlers on top of that. Oh yeah. Some of them are alien. <laughs> <laughs> ball a ball and that one Cherie they're playing basketball come on <laughs> this is crazy what is this no this is not a mirage look at this beautiful water and white sand out in the middle of the desert. Here we are way out. I guess we're in Canyonlands National Park. Not sure yet, maybe not. But beautiful water. It looks like beach, <laughs> but it's private property. And do you recognize this famous spot? Smells like Thelma and Louise out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that famous, like, it's a fairly old movie now. Yeah. This was the point. Yes, this right is here. the famous location at the, the end of Thelma and Louise when they drove off the Grand Canyon. But it's we're not, not the, in Grand Canyon. Yeah, not the Grand Canyon. They actually filmed it here in Utah. Which is right outside Canyonlands National Park here. We've got the Colorado River down there. That's a little ways down. Yeah, it's a, like a little Grand Canyon. Yeah, but wow, it is so gorgeous up here, but it's basically a Jeep trail. Oh, I'd say. <laughs> There's a lot of regular cars that came up here, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> well, a Mercedes sedan made it somehow. <laughs> yeah, they probably better sell that car now. <laughs> yeah, the under's probably pretty <laughs> scratched up now. Yeah. Let us know if you've seen Thelma and Louise and if you recognize this spot. Yeah. <laughs> or if you've ever been here. Right, I think that's the mountain right there that's in the shot. Yes, that's it. This spot on the Colorado River is so big, it's hard to get a drone shot to show all of it. Right now, we are right in the middle of this famous picture, the view from Dead Horse Point State Park. And if I wasn't scared enough already. Hi. All right, I got a tow truck coming. Oh, really? You sure? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just be careful passing. You should be able to fit. Oh, geez. Tom, you have more, a little bit more room over here. If you, got, you need more room. Wow, so that happened from making room, huh? Making room so yeah. somebody could get by. Yeah, that would be bad even for us with the Jeep. Yeah. So. Ugh. Yeah, wow. <laughs> how well, long have you been? How well, long ago good luck. 
about two hours, uh, hour and 45 minutes. Oh, so you've been stuck it out. About an hour and a half for the tow truck to get here. Okay. Oh, man. I, 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 I hope your insurance is going to cover that. And we're not even high that. yet. <laughs> it was fun until, you know. Until this happened. Yeah, yeah this isn't I'm exactly like, fun. Like, Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> You mind being on YouTube? Oh man! <laughs> what not to do on Schaefer? Road. What not, not to do? What not to do? Yeah, we do a lot of that on YouTube too. <laughs> Things not to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this road, don't take your RV on this road. Don't take your RV on this. Not road. an RV road. But I think this is the switchbacks, right? I oh, think. Yeah. She doesn't believe me that we're going up. Uh, he says we're going up there. I'm like, no. But actually, this is the easier part. You did the hard part. We've already done the hard part? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, well, the road's in better shape yeah, the road, right yeah, here. So. Look how narrow it is. Yeah. That's not better shape for me. <laughs> I need a wide road away from that edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well good luck. Right, yeah. So. Don't do this in the dark. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. <laughs> we are going up there on switchbacks. <laughs> And that's where we came from. Oh, it's so beautiful here. Here comes the tow truck. Yeah, someone's gonna be happy to see you. <laughs> He's probably the craziest son of a gun to be willing to do it. <laughs> yeah, he don't care. <laughs> He probably likes it. He's like, yes, yeah, a challenge. He's like, I'm going to be well paid for this. Oh, my God. See, it's uh, Walter Wiggles uh, on uh, Walter's Wiggles on Angel's Landing hike. No kidding. This is crazy. <laughs> I don't know. You start running, you might not be able to stop. Schaefer Trail of Canyonlands National Park is an iconic road that ascends 1,500 feet through a colorful, massive sandstone cliff. It began as a route made by Native Americans to access resources on top of the mesa. Later it was used as a trail for sheep herders moving flocks to better foraging in the wintertime, and then used as a road for trucks moving loads of uranium from the back country to market. Today, the Schaefer Trail is a challenging, unpaved back country road for recreational users seeking the experiences of a lifetime. The kind Tom likes. I get a little scared. That was fun, wasn't it, honey? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, that's a long ways down. Yeah. I think that makes for the scariest Jeep ride yet. We got the Red Rocks. You got the snow-capped mountains out there. Man, are you trying to see if you can see them? Yeah, because it's like down there somewhere, and it's like, I don't want to Oh, I see them. Where? Yeah, or the tow truck. I see just the tow truck. Right. Maybe he's already out and coming up. Or maybe he's, they're trying to figure out, it's, I mean, the car is way down where we can't see it. There's somebody walking down there. Now that the torture is over, I can enjoy the view with some guardrails. Yay! We are not going back to the campsite on Shaver Road. Canyonlands National Park in southeastern Utah is known for its dramatic desert landscape carved by the Green and Colorado Rivers. Author Edward Abbey, a frequent visitor, described the Canyonlands as the most weird, wonderful, and magical place on earth. There is nothing else like it anywhere. This is the island in the sky section, a huge flat topped mesa with panoramic overlooks. We didn't have time to see everything in this section of Kennylands National Park. The sun is going down. It's time to get back to our campsite. We 
have a longer drive today, but we are ready for another Canyonlands National Park adventure without the scary off-roading, right, Tom? On our way to the Needles section of Canyonlands National Park, we stopped by Newspaper Rock, which has the largest collection of petroglyphs in Utah. You got some unusual markings on you there, don't you? Are you reading the daily newspaper? <laughs> It's a petroglyph newspaper. Well, this is the most concentrated amount of petroglyphs we've ever seen yeah. at one point. <laughs> oh my gosh. And why do the toes have six toes? Or the feet have six toes? There's one that has four toes. <laughs> Maybe they were losing toes for... And what's up with the little antlers that everybody has? <laughs> <laughs> And that one looks like Bart Simpson. <laughs> the Needles section of Canyonlands National Park was named for the colorful spires of cedar mesa sandstone that dominate the area. Hiking trails offer many opportunities for long day hikes and overnight trips. We also met fellow travelers, Dan and Evan. Like I've gone diving in Egypt, Thailand, Bali, oh, Mexico. Nice. You're not wasting time. No, no, I, that's I awesome. Props bit, to but, you. Yeah. That's all the stuff <laughs> I want to do. Yeah. Well, you guys stay safe. So, I can't you wait to check out your channel. Safe yeah. travels Great meeting you and guys. Take it to Zion. Dan and Yvonne, we met out yeah. here yeah. in Canyonlands yeah. National Park. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the journey. journey. Canyonlands National Park was amazing and we've worked up quite the appetite so we're heading back to Moab for some dinner. <laughs> you hugging it says please hug me. Hugging a <laughs> petrified tree. Yeah. It says please hug me. <laughs> what are you smiling about? <laughs> we got the table we wanted. <laughs> yeah. Right here where we can watch traffic. Busy place. Yeah, yeah it is nice, a busy place. Nice view. Nice place to refuel after a long day yes. of adventuring yes. here uh, in Canyonlands National Park today. So it was thumbs up. <laughs> Pink thumbs up. Pink thumbs up. The margaritas sound good, but so does the Moab sex in the desert. <laughs> is that kind of like sex on the beach, but uh, is in the desert? Smearing off whipped vodka, X-rated passion fruit liqueur, and a splash of cran and orange juice. It sounds pretty good, right? I'm thinking the Red Rock Elefino, the Red Rock Elefino Double IPA. <laughs> 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 what is that, Tom? <laughs> Here it is. It says Bavarian burger, fried onions is the very first ingredient. Okay. So I waited for my waiter to come back and I asked him, I said, this was supposed to have fried onions on it. That's why I got it, because I love fried onions on burgers. And he's like, oh, maybe I put down the wrong thing. But then he confirmed that yes, there was supposed to be fried onions on here. He went down to, I guess, I think he went to go get some. I don't know, but it's like, it's taking a long time for him to come back. And I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> I keep waiting and maybe he's not coming back. Uh, like I said, it's a self-service restaurant. Do I need to go down to the kitchen go down to the and fry kitchen some and just fry up some onions? onions? Yeah. <laughs> so, are the jalapenos hot? <laughs> I don't know, but the song is the right song. The heat is on. <laughs> Sing it, Tom. The heat is on, 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 on. Hey, look at that. Someone got her I got onion. my onions. <laughs> And they are deep fried. Whoa. I don't think I'm gonna use all those.
isn't this incredible that they built this restaurant around this arch? Right here? <laughs> this arch. This is like the arch to see in arches right here. When you come to Moab, Tom calls it Moab. I don't know where the H comes from, but these are the arches you come to see. Right, and they built this restaurant around it. It is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fun experience. It was a fun experience. Would I recommend it for the food? I mean, it was good. No, but the 80s music was pretty the awesome. 80s music was a fun. It was a lot of reminiscing for us. Right. <laughs> Mr. Roboto. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes a song is just like a trigger. You hear it and it's like, it brings you back 30 years 40, I, I, a lot of years. A lot of, a lot of years. <laughs> and, and you know, you relive that memory, so. So that yeah. was fun, it yeah. Fun. And the food was good for the most part, and service was decent, but um, yeah. yeah, it was good, it was fun. Zax. Zax, in, in Moab. Moab. If you eat somewhere else, let us know, so next time we come back, we won't eat there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where do I go? Oh, uh oh, okay. How do I telescope? I don't know how to telescope. I want one of these. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, nice. Wow, so much detail. This was another awesome free camping spot. Just luckily we scored this one. I mean, this is, an, you know, no reservations, first come, first serve. This is the busiest boondocking free. It's not exactly BLM land. I actually forget what it is, uh, but it's, it's different. But government land, free to camp on. And we got this nice, like, elevated hill here that we got 360 views all the way around and we were alone up here most of the time, but it's a, it's a fairly big site. You could definitely have a group here or, or a number of campers in here. We are right next to Arches National Park. Actually, this is BLM 378 and you can take this road all the way into Arches, which was super cool, but it is off-road vehicles only i would say we saw a few cars out there would not recommend that at all uh, if you watch that part of our video it is definitely a jeep or 4x4 vehicle not not it, well, you got to be a street legal off-road type vehicle not atvs that, those are not allowed into arches but that was super cool to beat the crowds and not wait in line and go through that way. That's the only way we went into Arches. I will uh, put the GPS coordinates of this spot exactly uh, down in the description of the video so you can find it. Uh, we're just off of Highway 191, uh, just before the town of Moab. Beautiful, beautiful spot. On to the next adventure. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> I got to get out of here without taking or tearing off the kayaks. So that little hill going off of our little mountain here is not subtle. So, well, here we go. Hey! bit of scraping right there <laughs> so we're gonna probably get new kayaks eventually or get rid of them all together oh man what a nice sight it's available and open for you
We are off to our next adventure, but this one is different. We are headed to Skinwalker Ranch, a UFO and paranormal hotspot, and you can watch the whole documentary right here. have had issues with trespassers then right everybody trying to get over and get a view everybody's been trying to get to the ranch to take a look um it's completely landlocked by private or tribal okay there, there's no way to to get to it publicly nobody comes through this place either so i don't know where the lights was coming from so you heard it here first, they're going to be future RVers. Future RVers, right. yeah! <laughs> it is crazy though how everybody across the United States and Europe and everywhere else think that that they know exactly how to get to Skinwalker Ranch when it's completely landlocked and I grew up here. They're just scary. They need, <laughs> they need to stay out on their side of the fence. We actually live on that uh, Skinwalker Ranch Road. Have yeah. you ever? We have. We've got some cool stories. Ash. Bigger than humans, two big ones, one smaller one. Dark color. I don't know what it was. They don't know what it was. Guess where we are? We're at Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch. Ranch. What is Skinwalker Ranch? And why is it the most studied paranormal spot in the entire country, or perhaps the world? I don't know if you've watched that show or not, but it's kind of a big hit. They're on season two currently right now. And we just happened to take a detour up here yeah. on our way through Utah. This is the secret here we are. right here. <laughs> what is Skinwalker Ranch? We'll have to back up. It started way back with a curse in 1860 when a treaty between the Navajo and the Ute tribes in Utah ended. The Navajo supposedly cursed the land and according to legend released skinwalkers there. Can't go beyond this point. No, it's just stop. <laughs> but we have got so much cool stuff for you in this video. Yep. Even if you're a fan of the show, we discovered and found out even more stories that have not been covered on the show. Plus, we got an exclusive interview with Candace and Tom, resident anthropologists and caretakers of Skinwalker Ranch. You made a friend on Facebook that actually has a ranch right next, next door to the property. Yes. I also got permission from another rancher. We got up on the mesa yeah. looking down. The owner of the in. mesa let us go four wheeling up there. And we've talked to some locals which have shared their stories. And the ranch owners where we're staying have shared some of their stories that grew up here. Right. What do the locals really think about Skinwalker Ranch? This has been an experience. So totally. stay what was that? Stay tuned. Among the Navajo, skinwalkers are like werewolves, evil witches who can transform themselves into the creatures of their choosing, mostly into a large wolf-like beast. But the locals won't talk about it directly, fearing the curse. The area is also known as UFO Alley due to the long 50-year history of odd events said to have taken place there. They've seen or investigated evidence of close to 100 different incidents that include vanishing and mutilated cattle, sightings of unidentified flying objects or orbs, 
large animals with piercing red eyes that they say were unscathed by bullets, and invisible objects emitting destructive magnetic fields and strange lights. Let us know what you think after watching this video. Look for some of the strange objects and lights in our footage. Do you know what it is? And at the end of the video, we will let you know how you can camp here as well and get a tour right on the Mesa, legally. So many people come here and trespass, please don't do that. Make sure you subscribe as we visit more spooky places, haunted cities, haunted houses, and our RV all over the country. Would you like one of our special alien or UFO themed shirts? We made them just for Skinwalker Ranch fans. We'll have a link for those down below as well. And we are getting ready to go up the Mesa and we want you guys to come along with us and see if we can find anything interesting. We are so <laughs> happy that Stacy and Jody allowed us to stay here on their property. Yeah. That's right next to the ranch with a view of the mesa and they've got little baby goats and there's horses next door it's just been such a treat and this awesome side by side that's going to get us up there let's do right it right now yeah Stacy was born and raised right here on the property next to the Mesa on Skinwalker Ranch. Stacy and Jody took us up on the Mesa for a private tour with a view of Skinwalker Ranch. And you guys have had issues with trespassers then, right? Everybody trying to get over and get a view. Everybody's been trying to get to the ranch to take a look. Um, it's completely landlocked by private or tribal. Okay. There, there's no way to, to get to it publicly. So right here, we're, we're actually up on top of the mesa, still on private ground. We're, we're a few hundred yards from the property line. There's a proposed oil well location right here, and it's, it's still on the private landowner outside of the Skinwalker Ranch, but there is a proposed oil well every one of those stakes could be an oil oil well if all of these strange stories weren't enough there are oil wells staked up there just a few hundred yards from the command center so in theory they could be drilling for oil right below the ranch on top of everything else there's oil here too <laughs> yeah but the, the oil is uh it's probably 10 to 12 thousand feet deep that they would have to drill for. Each well would be directional. They could drill in different directions. Part of them possibly going underneath the Skinwalker Ranch. If we travel any farther south, we would actually be on the property of Skinwalker Ranch. So we're gonna have to stop right here just so that we're not trespassing. Now, who originally owned the ranch? Well, the first owners of record in 1934, Kenneth and Edith Myers, and they had no reports of any strange activities. Township Aww. two south, township three south, the property line is right there. The date stamp on this is 1963. Oh. That was when they placed this survey marker. Wow. We can stay on this private property right here and we'll get up on this rock and, and I think we can see the, the command center from here. 
Again, we were here legally on the Skinwalker Ranch Mesa with permission from the property owner. You can't just walk up here, it is landlocked. While we were up there, we stayed on the right side of the property line. I didn't see your helicopter pad down there. Oh, wow. Right, right there. The, oh, the main okay. road coming in comes right down. And about halfway across, you can actually see the gate possibly in the trees. So the property line is on that east side and it comes down the command center and the original homestead number one. One of the interesting things about the secret of Skinwalker Ranch show is that they're always trying different experiments to see what will happen on the ranch. For example, in one episode, they shot huge lasers toward the mesa to see what would happen. So up here is where they put, they shine the lasers up here, is that right? Yeah, they was shining them from the south back up against the, the base of the mesa here. Okay when they was doing their laser light show to see if they could pick up anything on the side of the mesa. And, and this is where they've got some footage of something unknown up flying here. up here above yeah. the mesa and strange lights. And strange right? lights. Strange lights, yeah. yes. The ranch property is at the base of the hill down here. I've never witnessed anything myself. Right. And but I'm not saying that there's nothing here or it's not real. And how many years have you been here? I basically grew up down where, where you guys are staying on our property. I grew up there, so. In 1994, Terry and Gwen Sherman bought the property. They only owned it for 18 months because they experienced UFO sightings, crop circles, and bizarre cattle mutilations. These mutilations were done with surgical precision and there was no blood evidence. Very bizarre. And maybe even more bizarre than that, there was a story about some bulls that were impossibly stacked together in a storage shed and they were unconscious. There was physically no way they could have been put in there that way. The cattle mutilations, I, I think that's probably definitely unexplainable. Um, I have heard some stories from some other neighbors, um, basically right close to where we're at as they was coming off the, the very top of the mesa and they seen some sort of creatures on two legs running out through the flats. Bigger than humans, two big ones, one smaller one, dark color. I don't know what it was. They don't know what it was. If you look back down towards the command center, there's a, a white container with I the see door that. opening on that. If you can zoom in on that, that oh. is actually the container the cows, where Sherman's big bulls somehow got stuffed inside it. Yeah, they've even seen some phenomena during the day. They uh, shot the rocket up. That's when they saw something that was during oh, the right. day, right? And that would have been, they would have been looking off to the to the west all right well let's see that light <laughs> <laughs> just amazing all of the different things here all coming together in one area stacy's dad and uncle used to walk by the ranch and were told to never be out there at night i have heard stories of possibly these small canyons down in here that you're not supposed to be in those after dark it was actually my dad and his brothers it was my uncle that was telling me the story a couple of years ago. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, when Myers owned the ranch, my dad and his brothers would come down and help him put up his hay, and then he would make sure that they was gone up over the hills back home before it got dark. To solve a mystery problem. Skinwalker <laughs> footprint. <laughs>
Plus, we got to look at the triangle on the ranch, which was an area for lots of additional experiments and investigations. You'll have to watch the series for more on that. Let's go a little bit farther east, see if we yeah. can possibly get to where we that could even good. see down into where Homestead 2 or 3 is even at. I don't know if we can, but let's go have a look. Oh, perfect. So we're right on the property line. Yeah, that's how I know where I'm at, be able to not trespass. We're actually getting pretty close to being above homestead number three. We just can't actually see it. It's right down here in these trees below the rocks. So homestead three is right down in the trees. Come right here. And we're the top of the power. Oh, I see is. it. Oh, yeah. Come over here. You can see one of the surveillance towers. Sweet. If you look down there to the south, you can see it. So that's actually one of the, the surveillance towers that Robert Bigelow and his team had constructed uh, back in the early 90s when they was doing research here. Now in 1996, Robert Bigelow purchased the property for $200,000 and he formed the National Institute for Discovery Science, also known as NIDS, to research the property and the strange events happening there. These studies were either kept secret or inconclusive, although several researchers on Bigelow's team claimed to have witnessed paranormal activity. The biochemists working with the Bigelow's National Institute for Discovery Science claimed to see a large humanoid creature spying on the research team from a tree. Yet their equipment would mysteriously malfunction at critical moments. There were even cases of electronic equipment being physically mangled and shredded and wires ripped out. According to the New York Times, Bigelow sold Skinwalker Ranch to Adamantium Holdings in 2016 for $500,000, also owned by Brandon Fugel. Brandon Fugel and the History Channel, with, along with Prometheus Entertainment, are producing The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. They're currently filming season three. They brought together quite a team of researchers to try to get to the bottom of all of the strange happenings here at the ranch. And we'll put a link down below where you can stream the first couple of seasons on Amazon. We recorded two whole nights of footage of the Mesa. Can you see anything? So we're gonna set up a night lapse on a GoPro to basically watch the Mesa. Maybe if we see some stars, but it will run all night long.
The next morning, Stacy and Jody told us about a friend that had a unique food truck selling shaved ice in town and that he also might have some unique stories to share with us. So that's where we're headed next. that we're staying with said that this Piccadilly place, this cute little food truck, has something very unique. Yeah, uh, shaved ice. Like a snow cone. With pickles on Pickles. <laughs> and apparently they have repeat customers, so we thought this might be a unique thing to try. We could use a snack right now. We're a little scared though, honestly. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> We are staying with Jody and Stacy. Oh, perfect. I know them. Yeah, yeah they told <laughs> us to come by here. They're like, okay, you got to go try a snow cone. Awesome. MJ. Hi, Jay. You bet. Man. Have anything interesting to share with us? <laughs> We're all ears. All right. <laughs> well, the Piccadilly is famous here in Fort Duchesne. Oh. It's the only one in Fort Duchesne. I and bet. we yeah. came up unique. with that. So it is very unique. What we do is we. Uh, have the shaved ice, and then you pick your flavors. Uh, we have pina colada, grape, raspberry, tiger's blood, and then we uh, put the pickles on top of it, and we caramelize it with uh, Kool-Aid. So it caramelizes the pickles. Oh, so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, that yeah. sounds crazy. Would you guys try it? Let us know down in the comments. <laughs> Definitely, it is good. Let us hook one up for you and let you guys try it. Okay. Sounds great. Hey, thanks. Yeah. What is tiger blood? Tiger blood. <laughs> tiger blood is a very, it's almost like a cherry and um, I would say uh, strawberry and cherry together. Oh. It's a really good combination. You don't have skinwalker blood? We can come up with one. <laughs> that would be can great. We, like do an original? Yes. Okay, how about? <laughs> that would be great. Tiger blood and black cherry. Black cherry is a good yes. combination. Yes, because yes. it's all red. Yes. Yes. Ugh. Yes. Pickles. It's almost like pickles and ice cream. Makes me wonder if some a pregnant lady didn't come up with this in the <laughs> middle of the night. <laughs> oh yeah, my god. It looks like gummy bears on there. Oh my goodness gracious. That's, um, tiger's blood and black cherry mixed together. <gasps> oh Put my pickle gosh. Pickle in the middle and um, Kool Aid on the top. Like Kool Aid and um, Pop Rocks. Nerds oh and gummy bears. Oh my gosh, did you get all that? Uh, I That's think so. Nuts. Better than tiger's blood, skinwalker blood. Wow. I just had a little taste and it's really surprisingly good. <laughs> I'm giving you a bite right now. Oh, this is awesome. My mouth's on tingly. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Surprisingly so good. Yes. Wow, that is really good. Holy cow. <laughs> oh man. That was the bike. That was the epic bike. That's crazy, crazy. So this is one of a kind then. It your, is. your location. It is. We actually live on that uh, Skinwalker Ranch Road. Okay. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Really? Our house is the one that has the fence. The only fence. Oh. On the uh, south side of the road. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Have you ever seen we have. We've got some cool stories. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Can you come out and talk to us? <laughs> <laughs> some of the stories we're not allowed to talk about because they're... Uh, really? Yeah. They're, they're uh, like uh, native stories and we're not allowed to really talk about them. But, right. But there's some things that we can talk about. Yeah. We want okay. those some things. Yeah. We don't want you to share anything you don't feel comfortable with. Right. Right. Well, we always say... Our fence that we built, uh, we got those, we, we bought them and we got them from the gym that they, the bleachers from the gym. Way, 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 way back when they used to have the gym and they built the gym, those, the wooden, the wooden boards and everything else. Actually, these are them. Oh, okay. And uh, so they tore those down and put new bleachers up. 
So we said, hey, let's get a couple of those and we'll build a fence with So that's what we did. We built our fence with them. Well, anyway, you know how the story goes with like in high school and everything else, everybody chews gum and sticks them underneath the bleachers yeah. and everything else. So we got those kind of boards. <laughs> <laughs> so we put the boards up as a fence. Next thing you know, uh, it only took about a week and all the gum was gone from the bleachers. Get out. So we said, where did the gum go? I know, I'm not gonna eat it. I mean, they're years and years older and they're all hard. Nobody wants that gum. But when we went back over to that fence, there was footprints on along that fence. Not just one, but a couple of them. That we tilled all this and everything else. Now the ground is settled, but there was a track going all the way across. So we're like, well, who would be crazy enough to dig them off and start chewing them and everything else and we not no one in their right mind would be doing that no but the paths were there and they they had um there's hooves marks there was three three prints in there we couldn't tell what they were or because we've never seen them before but they're all over that fence huh mm -hmm. yeah and our gum is gone three claws where now right here yeah like we're just trying to Scrape it off. Yeah, yeah, like it was trying to scrape it off. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and this one too, you can see this one too's got scratch marks and, and it's hard. It's 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 hard. Oh my god. Let's see, it's all scratched off. Yeah. This one right here off. It'll take you right to Skinwalker Ranch. The dead ends at Skinwalker. So are Ranch. you a believer? I am a believer. Hundred okay. percent. I am. Yep. Wow. Yeah, we, we see some eyes out there in the dark and everything else when we sit outside and talk. And Do you get freaked out? No. Do you get scared? No. At all? No. Because no. if, if you show fear, yeah. you show any any kind of weakness, they feed off of that. Oh, they true. feed off of it and they will come closer yeah. and, and everything. So Keep as long a high as they vibration know, of love. Yes. And yeah, they, and they, they won't mess with you. No, they I did that going to bed last night because I was a little scared. Because we're, you know, we're staying on their property and we have our RV here. So I'm getting ready going to bed and I'm like, okay, love, love. Just, <laughs> oh, please, right. please don't abduct me tonight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to have that high vibration of, yes. yeah. And fear is a very low vibration. Yes. Mm -hmm. We feed off of it. Mm -hmm. And they know it. Mm -hmm. So, what about like alien stuff? What, do you know anything about that? We've seen some lights um, coming from the ground up. Kind of like, uh, it, it's comparable to the, in Vegas where they have the pyramid. The bright light that goes up like that. We've seen a couple of those. Um, Really? Yeah, we've seen a couple of those. Okay. And and whatnot. So we can't explain what they are, but because we don't travel that we're just like we'll just sit here at the house, look at that light over there, looks like and we you know, we're not gonna go chase it or anything like that. But there's um there's orbs, I guess you call them, the orbs. And we see them, we see them all the time. Floating up really? and over there. Yeah. I wanna see one. Do yeah. you call them? We don't. We just let. We just. We just sit up there and they just we come. Just we just see them. I'm gonna come yeah. sit with you on your porch. How yeah. big are they? <laughs> they're probably. They're probably. Gosh, because they come up over that mesa. Yeah. So they're probably like a football, maybe a, a basketball size that we see. Um, they're smaller ones, but the ones that we see are like uh, basketball ones. So what are they? We don't know, and we don't want to know. We just <laughs> we just enjoy the light. Yeah, we just we we don't even want to know. So they're blue, they're uh -huh. blue. But if you put them on like your iPhone or try to capture them, of course it's gonna shrink and then they just disappear. Really? They know you're recording? Yeah. yeah. How long have you lived on that road? I've been there for 15 years now. Oh wow! Yeah. So quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, at least four or five years back, we started seeing more and more activity and everything else, and people coming and going. They okay. Still, yeah, they still start. They still visitors are still coming and going down that road just yeah. to go Skinwalker. <laughs> but, so funny. So but it is. It's pretty cool. The orbs and things you've seen since the beginning, or the just orbs recently? we started seeing about maybe probably about six years ago. We started paying attention to them about six years. Huh. Ago. Yeah. Secret yep. government project. <laughs> What's that? Secret Se government project. I think so. That's I think so. I do. They're in on yeah. whatever's going on. Wow. Well, this has been an extra treat today. 
Good yeah. deal. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, you bet. Jay or Jake? It's Jamo. Jamo. Okay. Yeah. So come and see Jamo at Piccadilly. Yeah, Shane what guys is your name? here. What? Yeah. Anna. Anna and Anna. At the powwow grounds of Porter Shane. Yeah, she made this beautiful piece of artwork. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's delicious and unusual at the it same time. It is surprisingly delicious. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> Bob Rocks. Well, that was super cool getting some more stories about the weirdness going on in yes. this area. <laughs> yeah, he was full of some great information. The orbs and the gum. <laughs> this will be interesting. Like yeah. everything else has been since we've been here. So we are going to actually head toward the front of the Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. At least we can go to the front where there's a sign and that yeah. kind of stuff and see what's there. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> you scared? <laughs> <laughs> do we need like a Skinwalker repellent? Like a Skinwalker off? We just drank Skinwalker blood oh, in our snow cone. Yeah, so that like a... it's like a, a cloak, if you will. <laughs> We're invisible. <laughs> We're wearing the Skinwalker blood cloak. <laughs> You need to watch Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Look where we're at. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a stop sign. What does that mean? Right, big stop sign. Yeah. Lots of no trespassing, no parking, and and like these concrete sort of barriers right here. And it's the gates way back there. Yeah. So they don't even want you getting somewhere anywhere close, close to it. See any skinwalkers? Huh? Right. Catching anything? You seeing anything? <laughs> UFOs? <laughs> Gold? <laughs> right, I right. thought you looked familiar. Yeah, we actually just discovered the show, what, like a month ago? And just like binged the first season. And so, and then we're staying with some friends over here next door to okay. skinwalker. So, yeah. What, is it on a ranch? Uh -huh. So, so there's it's not no conclusions then, huh? No, right? I know. <laughs> I know. We need some <laughs> answers. <laughs> We're just talking about this yesterday. We came home one night and there was an entire um, firefighter crew. They were up here putting, really in a fire. You know, or, and they were off for the day. And we got mm -hmm. home and there was like 20. Firefighters, firefighters, just, like, right all these people were like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> they were just hoping to see something. Is there anything you can share that the that we can share that is okay for you to share on camera? We got our first hummingbird feeder this summer. Oh, our, yay! Sweet. We got a hummingbirds loving us. Hot tub hummingbirds. <laughs> is there anything you can share off camera? That, <laughs> Not really. Oh, we, we, we want to keep our job. Yeah. I know. I right. understand. Like it. Totally respect that. Hi, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> is Eric still out here or is he comes he's and goes? He comes and goes. He comes yeah. and goes, but he's, okay. he's remotely on and we'll probably potentially we'll hear like, uh, is that you guys at the gate? Like, yeah. He's watching, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually working on our little about a night. So you heard it here first, they're going to be future RVers. Future yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we love to travel, have to, you know, and I, I think what you guys are doing, it sounds like what you guys are doing. Yeah, I could get rid of You have been for, full time for four years and you've been like six, six, seven years now. Yeah, long time. So it's work on we the just road. keep going. And yep. Make a video or a few <laughs> videos right. a week. I and love it. So. <laughs> yeah, it's not terrible. No. No. <laughs> no. No, right? That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yes. It's great. It's like yeah. Well, That's conspiring it. Conspiring for conspiring you. Conspiring for you. Manifest whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Do That's it. Right. Yes. All right.
<laughs> Take care, guys. Have a good Bye, trip. Guys. Thank guys. you. Enjoy the journey. Yes. <laughs> That was super cool, meeting Thomas and Candace. Yeah, from the show. From I think show. he goes by Tom on the show okay. to not be confused with, with the Thomas. other Thomas. Yes, yes. They <laughs> were They're under waiting. strict, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they've got the <laughs> non-disclosure yeah. agreements, which yeah. of course any show like this would. Of course. evening we sat down with Stacy and Jody to even hear more stories about the Skinwalker Ranch Mesa area. It is crazy though how everybody across the United States and Europe and everywhere else think that that they know exactly how to get to Skinwalker Ranch when it's completely landlocked and I grew up here. I was born on this property right here and you know so I, I kind of know where Skinwalker Ranch is at so it's kind of funny that it is really cool to get that closed legally. I think probably a fourth of the people in the Uinta Basin probably believe, believe, at least somewhat believe, but I don't not believe. I just have a deal when we move down here. If they stay on their side of the fence, I'll stay on mine. So now for years I've seen the little zombies crawling across the rocks out back and yeah, so I don't know. Zombies, skinwalkers, they're, they're all in the same same category. Same exact category. <laughs> they're just scary, so they're just scary. they stay away. <laughs> they need to stay out on their side of the fence. In another bizarre story, Stacy's daughter, Caitlin, had a unique experience when she was young, staying right here next to the Mesa. And Caitlin is... is... Caitlin's my oldest daughter. My dad was watching TV and Caitlin was on the couch, which was right by that window, and she was back and forth. And uh, she. What, maybe two or three? She three? was like three, three, maybe four years old, back and forth across the couch, jabbering. And my dad said that he could hear her actually, like, like talking, you know. She was old enough to talk a little bit. And so while he was watching TV, finally he asked her, he said, Caitlin, who are you talking to? She just turned around and says, oh, one of my friends, talking, and pretty soon she turns around and looks at my dad and says, but they, they said they, they're not here to hurt anybody. They're okay. That's so, spooky. yeah, that, that was kind of, kind of a freaky little story right there, but. Stacy's father also had a weird experience right here at the Skinwalker Ranch Mesa. My sister says that my dad had seen some stuff. They lived in a just a single wide trailer when I was growing up, has a metal roof. And this was after I was already an adult, moved out, and my dad told me that there was something running across the top of his roof one night, back and forth on that 65 foot trailer house. Stacy's mom saw lights out by the mesa when no one was back there. My mom called my phone, woke, woke us up in the middle of the night and asked me what I was doing out back, you know. We've got 20 acres, the back of our place is like another 300 yards back there. And uh, She actually asked me what what I was doing back there and I said, I, back, back where, mom? You know, and she had dementia and I, you know, didn't really try to say that she didn't know what she was talking about, but you know, I'm at home, mom. And she said, no, there's lights out back, isn't that you? What are you doing? What are you doing back there? No, Mom, I, I was sleeping. I was in bed. You know, I instantly, I was on the phone, and I walked to the window, and I, I'm looking, and I can't see any lights because I, I can see the same thing that she can see out, out the back window. She was seeing lights. She was seeing lights, you know. And that's right back looking at the mesa. Yeah, it, yeah the back it's side looking of... at the basically the back side of the mesa from the Skinwalker Ranch. 
it's all private property. You was you was there yesterday. There right. is there is no other roads going in there, was there? No. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not like anybody else could get in there. And there's no way to, for anybody to drive back there. Yeah, there's. I mean, unless you've got access to one of the gates, there's no way to there's no way to drive back on. The yeah, there's there's no the way lines. to drive back there onto that mesa. Nobody comes through this place either. So I don't know where the lights was coming from. One phenomenon that the area is known for is portals. A portal is thought to be a doorway or a rift between two different realms or areas of existence. Witnesses have claimed to see various entities or creatures appear and disappear into these portals around the Skinwalker Ranch Mesa area. Supposedly there is a portal on the property and another one in the area. They've mentioned seeing one on the show. My my uncle Tom says there's a portal right here on your property, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he says it's on our property. There are coyotes in the area and wild dogs. Could possibly explain the missing livestock. Mutilated livestock? Jody had lost one of her goats from the wild animals that got into their pens. So a couple minutes ago, I heard some coyotes howling. Um, we're actually going out to set up the GoPro, but since I heard the coyotes howling, I'm gonna grab my AR-15, we're gonna go out and see if we can see the coyotes, because we had some wild dogs get into the goats a few months ago. Um, wasn't a very good thing, got some of the goats, so, you know. Yeah, that was sad. Kinda, kinda carry a rifle when we go out and about, just in case. Let's go get the GoPro set up, see Sound, what we see. Sounds good, thanks Stacy. Spooky light in the dark there. And almost like on that the one episode, season one of Skinwalker Ranch, huh? That's probably the flare at the 
compressor station out there for CH4 in the Womack field and excess gas maybe the compressors went down and they're not running but there's still natural gas coming in so instead of venting that to the atmosphere they actually have a flare stack that's going to burn that to where it's not just being released into the atmosphere you can see that glow from the fire it's actually making the whole entire sky glow <laughs> yeah that makes sense <laughs> But if you didn't know that, it looks kind of spooky out there. If you didn't know that, it would, it would definitely freak you out. My wife was telling me a few minutes ago about my mom seeing the lights was in between here and, and the Skinwalker Ranch. And there was nothing. And there's, in there's nothing in between us and the Skinwalker Ranch as far as oil right. well locations. Right. So. You know, there could be lights back there bouncing around. <laughs> My wife says if Skinwalker Ranch is real, we're moving, but <laughs> we're probably not. She likes her goats. Unless somebody wants to give us a bunch of money, then we right. might move. Right. So we'll, we might put your contact information down below in the description. Right, right, right. If you're looking for a place right next to Skinwalker Ranch for the right dollar, you know? It'd be a lot of dollars, not so. just one. It'd be a few. Yeah. The right amount of money. Yep, yep. <laughs> and it's interesting, you were talking about how the tribal leaders, a lot of them believe in this, but they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. You, even talking to, uh, is it is it Jame, Jame Co? Or? Jamo? Jamo, right. Jamo, yeah. Jamo, uh, he was like, well, you know, I'll tell you a few stories, but I can't tell you everything because... You know, it's just not, but I believe, but I can't tell you everything. Yeah. I can probably see why they don't want to say anything. You know, the curse from the Navajos would put it to where it would follow them home. I see. It so would follow them home. It would follow them for years. That's the belief then is basically. Yeah. We're yeah. not going to talk about it or share it because that would activate the curse. It might. It might be the chosen few that gets to see it i don't i don't think i'm part of that chosen few <laughs> i don't maybe you prefer know. not to be <laughs> you know and and maybe lucky <laughs> right might be might be one of the lucky few that hasn't been able to see anything do i think there's something there probably probably with everything going on there must be something there's to, something to explain all of it there's something yeah what do you guys think let us know down below in the comments yeah what do you think of all this spooky stuff going on with the shows the documentaries and i mean all of the history here with the gold and i mean just crazy interesting area there's so. there's definitely something to the third dimension I actually went for a drive tonight in the side by side. Uh, we just up on some other other property, looking out for some some neighbors' cattle that they got up there. You know, they they live a ways away, so I told them I'd go have a look and uh, actually seen another petroglyph up there tonight. Oh, it was actually a snake on a rock. Interesting. Which, if you've been watching. Skinwalker Ranch series, that's a... Could mean a lot of things. Could mean a lot of things. Guardian to the portals. Right. That's not too far from here where I just seen that. And it's it's an actual... It's an actual petroglyph. It's not just water stains on a rock. <laughs> it's time to go get the GoPro that we had pointed at the Mesa all night. I can't wait to see what we got. Yes. It was actually a clear night last night. We could see the stars. Yeah. So. Are those tracks? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we got some paranormal activity. Right. Some unusual, unexplained events. <laughs> Full night. 
footage looking directly at the mesa over there and the sky oh, above that? it. Oh, it's a plane. <laughs> up there but I don't know what it is and this is not everything there are many other stories and theories about this area but we encourage you to watch the show we'll put a link down below to check it out on Amazon there is also a reservoir located next door to the Mesa it's called Bottle Hollow it's a 420 acre man-made lake and that was filled with fresh water in 1970 by the federal government. In 1998, a police officer saw a large light plunge into the reservoir and then re-emerge, flying off into the night sky. One night in 2002, four young men standing on the reservoir shoreline saw a blue-white ball enter the artificial lake. Another theory is that an asteroid impacted the area creating the Uinta Basin and leaving unusual metals that are giving off the strange magnetic fields. Stacy and Jody have started a campground on their property so you can have a chance to stay right next to the Mesa and get a tour, actually on the Mesa. We will put their contact information below so you can add it to your adventure list. Make sure you subscribe as we visit more spooky places in our RV, haunted houses, towns, weird places all over the country. Would you like one of our specially themed alien or UFO shirts? We'll have a link down below so you can pick up one of those for yourself as well. If you like this documentary, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. So what do you think of Skinwalker Ranch? Do you believe there's something supernatural going on here or can it all be explained away by science. Go ahead and let us know down in the comments. Did you see anything in our footage that can't be explained? Thanks for watching friends and remember, enjoy, enjoy the, the journey. journey. Yeah. Woo! Enjoy the journey. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know if they'll be able to come to a conclusion or not right as much stuff as there could possibly be happening right yet again i don't know if i believe it yeah i i would say that but, it, not believe it. but i don't not believe right it. kind of like neutral like you really don't know at right. some point maybe they'll explain a few things but they're not going to explain everything no well there's See? a lot of history here like you were talking about the radiation stuff last night uh you're also talking about the gold i mean there's just a lot of different elements going into you know this area so some things could be explained by the radiation some things could be explained by maybe gold you know they did find some kind of mass structure underneath the earth we don't know what that was there's, yet there's right? been there's been tales of of the spanish gold being cursed also and it's not it's not just right here by the skinwalker ranch it's all over the uina basin yeah, and I've heard about these curses before, like the Blue Hope Diamond at the Smithsonian, how that, anybody that owned it died, like, tragically and mysteriously. So, you know, that's something I grew up learning about, and so that's always kind of, like, stuck with me how weird that is, but perhaps it's a thing, you know? That's not very hopeful. Uh, the Blue Hope, Hope Diamond, Diamond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you buy it, you hope you live. <laughs> so if you think you're gonna come and find gold, don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they will not appreciate you digging around here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why Dragon says you can't dig. You can't dig. He knows something. <laughs> yeah, like there's ledge rock and it's going to take you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> this was season 27. <laughs> right. We're still digging. Uh, <laughs> digging, drilling. 
whatever, this is not going to be an easy job, right? No. <laughs> so happy that Jody and Tracy allowed us to stay on their property. Hey, Stacy, you're going to have to start all over now. Uh, stay. Oh, I said Tracy. Oh. Did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. And this is why filming takes so long. I know. How good of friends are you? What's his name again? So what they have to do is drill below the spaceship to yeah, get the below oil. Below the spaceship. Yeah, below the spaceship <laughs> to get to the oil. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Who knows what's going to happen when they drill that. The oil rig might blow up. <laughs> the, the aliens might not like it. The <laughs> right. spaceships come down, blow up the drilling rig. Yes. It's maybe some kind of metal hitting metal or something. Skinwalkers, come and get it. Yeah, <laughs> here's your food. Here we are. <laughs> Ooh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> now zoom in to see the secret code to get into the gate. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? The gate's open. Let's make a run for it. <laughs> run for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Tom and Thomas as well, so uh, I'm a part of this group of Toms. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a parade of goats. Oh, yay! Who wants one to eat? No, say no carrots. Oh, you're the lady with carrots, and now you have something delicious. Ooh, a little oh, biter, huh? Wow. Ooh, somebody had some gas. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> or is that your breath? Which one? Oh, hey. Okay. okay, we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at the ranch, they're saying, hey, there's strange lights out there. <laughs> <laughs> right, because, because we are on the backside of the mesa oh from where they're normally... Oh my gosh. Normally... It's been them all along. <laughs> <laughs> it really wasn't, but... <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's funny. Nice observation there, Tom. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this where we take our RV across the country visiting other spooky and haunted areas. What other kinds of mysteries will we find out? Again, subscribe so you find out. Don't believe the rumors. I don't think they're true. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I think you're crazy, but yes, it was fun. Like one person mentioned to us, it looks like the Tetons actually, not quite as grand, but it does look like the Tetons here. Mount Tipinogo. You know, this campground is called the Great Horn Owl Campground for a reason. Definitely checking me out, I think. It ain't right. it's so beautiful. I, oh, can I get a picture from up here? Deer Creek State Park. Wow, another one of our favorites. This, this place is so busy on a Saturday that there's a line of boats coming to get into the ramp and they still have availabilities. The spot right next to us is open and doesn't have a tag on it. This campground is not full even on the weekend. We are playing Campground Santa with some extra chairs that Lippert gave us. Pretty cool. 
by the way, I wanted to mention there's been some rumors out there, uh, some blogs, some videos saying that a lot of people are quitting RV life or RV living full time because of the increase in costs, uh, hard to find campsites, and even RV technicians are hard to find or always backed up for months. But this simply is not true. If anything, more people are joining the RV lifestyle and coming out here on the road. More and more people can work from home, uh, therefore they can take it on the road with increased connectivity, with Wi-Fi. And just because you might hear a couple friends say, oh yeah, we're gonna quit RV life, or you see a Facebook post and a couple dozen people say they're gonna quit, Saying you're gonna quit and actually taking action to quit are two very different things. And that doesn't make a statistic or a trend that that's happening. I think the trend is more and more people are joining this lifestyle because of all of the advantages. Yes, there are challenges, but there's challenges with all kinds of different lifestyles. And you'll just find ways to overcome them, whether that's watching your budget more, or booking out campgrounds farther in advance, learning how to do some of the RV tech work yourself, for example. So what's our experience like trying to find a campsite? Well, it does take a little bit longer, but every area we've wanted to go to, we've always found a spot. Now we do have a lot of different memberships, thousand trails, coast to coast, uh, harvest hosts, and blowing bubbles. <laughs> Now we do have a lot of different memberships, Harvest Hosts, Thousand Trails, the Encore Parks Collection, Coast to Coast, RPI, and pretty much every membership that makes sense. If you have more tools, you'll have more options. And speaking of campsites, uh, even though there's about five or 600,000 RVs that will be sold this year, most of those people are not full time. They'll use those maybe a couple of weeks this year and the RV is going to be in storage the rest of the time. So they're not taking up all the campsites. Like there won't be 500,000 people all trying to find campsites on the same weekend. And they're also building more. Uh, just in Florida alone, they're adding 7,000 new campsites this year. Nationwide, it's over 53,000 campsites this year, and that there will even be more next year. Why? Because investors see the opportunity in building more campgrounds or expanding campgrounds for more campers, and that's going to continue into the next year as well. So don't believe the rumors. I don't think they're true, but maybe I don't know. Let us know in the comments below what do you think? Are people really quitting this lifestyle or are more people actually joining and the normal people that just decide they don't want to do it is what's actually going on? Hey Cherie. Yeah. You want to go play? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go play. Yeah, what are we going to do? I found a really awesome Jeep trail that uh, we can go out for several hours. It's in the mountains, but there's pretty blue water. Oh, I'm in then. Thumbs <laughs> up, let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does it feel like I belong, trying to keep it alive? 
Silver Lake Reservoir, high up in the mountains. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I think you're crazy, but yes, it was fun. <laughs> Unplanned uh, adventure here today, so. Yeah, and I think <laughs> the uh, Jeep is now properly brown. Is it brown enough? Is it time for a car wash? Uh, so the next time somebody says, why is your Jeep always so dirty? It's because we do dirty fun things. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a Jeep, <laughs> that's why. It's a Jeep. <laughs> so if you don't like it dirty, Sorry, but it's going to be dirty. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The Horned Owl Campground has no hookups, so you're dry camping, you're closer to the lake, which is cool, and it's only $25 per night plus tax. You know, this campground is called the Great Horned Owl Campground for a reason. Okay, so there's a nest here. You're gonna show me the secret nest, huh? Sweet. Never seen an owl this big before. Really? Cool. She's got a baby. Yes. There she is. That's the baby, believe it or not. They're hard to see, they're very well camouflaged. But see, the baby is right there. Oh, wow. The mother's three times the size, if you can believe that. She's monstrous. So that is the baby. That's the baby. It's unbelievable. She's grown, we've been watching her grow the last two months. But the mother's massive. Mother is off somewhere else she's then? Really? Sometimes she'll be staged in this tree at night. At night, every night we see her. I'm right here on the campground. Oh, okay. At night I see her everywhere, way back on a tree up here, right at dusk, where she's hunting. That and is so cool. It is one of the coolest things you ever see. But that baby has grown immensely in the last couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks ago, it was pure white. Really? It was never out of the nest. That is something. I'll have to try to get a closer look. That was super cool for Mike, one of the camp hosts here, to show me where the nest was and a baby horned owl is super cool. Uh, it's in sight five here, so you don't want to disturb them, but wow, being in sight five, holy cow, that's super cool that you've got this nest right here. Hey. Hey, oh, hey. Guess, guess what? <gasps> what? There is a great horned owl in this park. Really? <gasps> yeah, actually there's two of them, a, a mother and her baby. And you saw them? Yes, I saw the baby. <gasps> I wanna go see. Yeah, can let's we, go see. Yeah, check it out. Okay, cool, let me finish this. Yes, get back to work. <laughs> Well, you stick your fingers all over it when they're all wet and sticky and gross. <laughs> we don't have kids here. We, Maybe you should be over here cleaning it who off. Who are you talking to? <laughs> you. <laughs> Maybe you should be over here. Here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see it breathing up there. It's a hot day. It's going to hit 90. Oh, look, he's so cute. He's fluffy. <laughs> He's watching us. <laughs> and when mama is up in this tree here, she's up against the main branch, you can't see her. Really? She really, it, it, you see the head turn a little bit, then you see, oh, there she is. 
she is so camouflaged with that tree bark. It's unbelievable. Wow. So are you down here or are you up there? I'm up there actually. Well, if at dusk, if you remember at dusk, I'll be here. Come and see me here at dusk because there's a spot over here that she's at. On the very top of a tree, there's three big branches that stick out. I don't know how they support her weight. Really? She, she sits up there and hunts. Okay. You got the tree, you got the three branches sticking up. She sits on the very tip top like she's an angel on a Christmas tree. It's awesome. And she sits up there and you watch that head turn 270 degrees. I can turn hunting. Wow. She's up hunting now for her baby. And uh, if she was here, you would not believe she's two to three times the size of that baby. That is crazy. Anyway, wow. I don't the, tell, what's I don't, your name? My name is Mike. I'm the Mike, I'm Tom. Tom. Nice to meet I you. Don't tell Appreciate it. About this because I'm worried about some kids coming up here throwing rocks at him or something. Oh right. Then I'd have to bend them over my knee. Then I'd probably, <laughs> then I'd probably go to jail. <laughs> so an important part of camping is the restroom facilities. I have not stepped foot in here. So let's take a look and see how well they are maintained. I'm pretty impressed with the rest of the park. Let's take a look. Oh, this seems very clean. Handicapped accessible restroom. Nice, very nice. I would give this a nine out of 10 for campground bathrooms. Definitely super nice one. And if you don't want a boat, but just enjoy the beautiful scenery by the lake here, there's a number of shaded or mostly shaded picnic tables overlooking the water. Could it be any more perfect? Great. We spent nine days here and we didn't want to go. I mean, beautiful reservoir here and we didn't get a chance to get on the water this time but we did some amazing exploring in the area it's just another area that we need to come back and spend more time at you know the sites here are pretty nice they're updating a lot of them ours had low water pressure just to let you know but i compensated by just filling up the tanks and using the water pump so that's how we got by with that and our site was a 30 amp i don't know if they're upgrading all of that or not but for 35 dollars a night plus tax and this view right here plus we're only a half an hour out of provo so shopping is fairly close but just a beautiful area and yeah we will definitely come back time to get on the road and actually going to a tire shop got to fix that spare tire plus we are going to another place i've planned for months now looking forward to it antelope island in the middle of salt lake that's going to be super cool back to dry camping but only for three days or three nights or something like that so time to get on the road separate and the tread comes and takes out all the side we had a guy it's like the land that time forgot what is it space capsule <laughs> Oh, there's one right there. 
It's a bison surprise. Gosh, this place has the most amazing sunsets. Thank you. <laughs> That's right, it's full time, so it is our house. It's gonna, I guess it'll have to drop right there. <laughs> Everything pulled in, it doesn't have a lot of room. Caught it before it blew out, so no damage. Good, good. And uh, we've seen so many of these fifth wheels come in, and a lot of the new ones, they put the cheap, Chinese, cheapest Chinese tires, they put them on there. Right. Separate, and the tread comes and takes out all the side we had a guy about two years ago it was about 10 grand worth of damage the tire did oh it wow flopped i mean ripped everything out he had to have it all rebuilt and they they took care of him but it was about 10 grand worth yeah i had a previous trailer that we had that happened to not that much damage but learned my lesson got a good tpms system yeah and these g-rated west lakes even though they're from china they bend decent so we well, just had the west lakes aren't terrible yeah we haven't had uh, many issues with those we've done some west lakes okay you know, these rubber masters are awesome they've got a nationwide road hazard warranty too for okay tires, so that's that's definitely a bonus for you too if you have issues i really want to upgrade to salins i had super good luck with salins okay after yeah. and they weren't very expensive definitely i, I don't want any blowouts i know that no so you got some toys in the back too then uh i've got an office back there oh okay <laughs> the kayaks are the toys we got e-bikes thank yes. you so much john hey, from tire world, tire world here in salt, salt lake, lake city if you need help these guys will get you fixed up so awesome appreciate it yes, i'll you're welcome. head over to the truck center and get yeah. that bad boy on they'll get y'all set up he's waiting for you so awesome well now the challenge is will this close up with that right there yes all right oh Cherie will be happy to see that tire in there that tire will be long gone by the time she gets back with lunch These guys were quick, just passing through. They sent me to the truck center so I could get done quicker because they were pretty much full at the auto center. But anyway, would definitely recommend these guys. They were quick, about $47 to install the tire and disposal. 150, 160 for the tire. Supposedly good. I'm gonna wait. You know, the other tires have a lot of life left in them not ready to buy six new tires yet so but time to get on the road and uh track down shree so let's go
Hi there. Are you just here for the day? Uh, no, I'm staying three nights. Did you, what's the last name? Uh, it's Kenamore. So you're at number 10 in Bridger Bay. You want to keep that on your mirror so the park range you can see. Okay. The gates are going to close at 10, so if you have to get off the island after that, you're going to be able to. You're just not going to be able to get back on until 6 in the morning. All right, so, have a nice night. Thank you very much. Gosh, I can't get over that view. Yeah, it's been <sighs> so nice. Just cooking dinner at night and looking out at this beautiful sunset. Oh yeah, I mean the sunset's phenomenal. Yes. Here. Yes. Gosh, this place has the most amazing sunsets. <laughs> yeah, this has been really nice. Oh wow. Are our spots going to keep getting better and better? <laughs> it's like, it blows us away. We're Each finding spot. some, uh, you really nailed it on the reservations. I hope our video will do it justice. You I know. hope so too, because you really feel the peace and nature being here. So many birds. You have something on your mouth. <laughs> it's good. You're good now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now that we got that settled. Uh, yeah, so we're on Antelope Island. Yes. In the middle of the Great Salt Lake, which is phenomenal by itself yeah the reflection of the mountains the land structures on the other side in the water and it's just incredible right and it's very peaceful out here small campground zero hookups right. but I'll just point over there quickly you can see some others over there it looks like it's a new campground almost completely built yeah they've been working really hard and really fast on this getting it <laughs> yeah. together maybe the demand but we didn't hear any construction noise I mean it was still super quiet so I guess and it looks like they're gonna have hookups yes up there. it does look like they're gonna have hookups which is great because we want to come back here right it's a huge island what 28,000 square feet no wait 28,000 square, square miles or acres or something like that <laughs> it's big trust us it's huge and the animals yes the I was just gonna get on that oh my gosh oh my gosh it was so nice we saw antelope we saw deer we saw bison bison lots that's lots their that's their them. key animal here because they and they do population control once a year and check on their health but yes plenty of bison if you you'll see one here and there and be like oh cool but then if you drive a little further up the island or is that south south on the island right <laughs> something like that <laughs> the long way <laughs> yeah you'll see tons of them babies oh there's one right there. <laughs> I, need, I was like, I need to see if there's anyone close by. <laughs> surprise. Yeah. It's a bison surprise. <laughs> I see babies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tiny ones. Oh, they're making noise. Yeah, they make honk noise. I've got an itch. I must scratch it. It's 
rubbing his face in it. <laughs> you know, he's wearing that bush. <laughs> it's like he's got something is tucked in his ears or something. doesn't appear to be eating it. And hundreds of species of birds, which is kind of strange. There's not a lot of trees on the island. No, there's not. But there's, I guess, a water source for them. But that uh, salt water must I don't... be fresh water somewhere, maybe. I don't know. But there's lots and lots of birds. Bugs. <laughs> Maybe that's why there's so many birds. Yeah, plenty. Plenty of food. Plentiful. <laughs> plentiful snacks. Right. <laughs> so just if you're a birder, like bird watching, oh my gosh, so many cool things oh, to see. Oh, we saw a road runner yesterday. Yeah. Run across. Something had chased it out of somewhere. Fox and it, or coyote yeah, maybe. and then it ran the other direction. Yeah, that was super cool. That was cool. So yeah, we really, really enjoyed this. The weather was really nice for the most part. Cool at night, nice climate during the day. Yeah, we didn't get in the water. No. You know, I know some people will do that. Sure. You know? The whole floating thing, you know, I, it is fascinating and I'm kind of curious, but with the bugs and the <laughs> muck and I'm not that curious. <laughs> I'll just look at right. the pretty view and not get in it. It's like, what is it? Space capsule? <laughs> you know, we're camping way up over there and out towards Salt Lake. We just see this blob out here and I've got to check it out before we leave. <laughs> That's weird looking. Gosh, must be something off a ship. If you know what that is, let us know in the comments. An anchor of some kind, but it's hollow. <sighs> Weird. It's crunchy. I'm guessing that that's like salt just kind of 
resting on the surface of the sand. That's crazy. It's like a wave of bugs. <laughs> like dominoes. Like the birds start, start it, I guess. <laughs> what a bizarre place it's like glass so little movement in this water the great salt lake is one of the saltiest lakes in the world there's not much that lives in here except brine shrimp which is something I used to have as a kid, actually. Uh, sea monkeys, they're all so-called. You can like buy them in a store and raise them. Because <laughs> they like feed on the salt. But ah, this is bizarre. And these flies, just everywhere. They, they're not really biting. They're disgusting. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna go for a dip. And this makes one more spot that we would love to spend more time. Yes. And oh, the hiking trails. Many, yes. many hiking trails. I went on a short one here, but it's very hilly, mountainy as well. So yeah, just, and again, the views, once you get on top and can see a 360 all the way around <gasps> of Salt Lake. And the reflection in the water, it's so cool. I think I'm gonna maybe Take a little hike up there. Lots of hiking trails here. <laughs> and the wind is here again. <laughs> <laughs> Going straight up this on a very hard to see pathway. But it's super cool. Look at the RV way down there. It's like the land that time forgot. Crazy sounding birds and Unusual rocks. Oh, yeah. Woo. Look at that. Oh, at least on this side of the mountain, it's not so windy, but you can see the RV way down there. There it is. Utah, seriously. <laughs> You've really outdone yourselves. 
so many cool things to do and see here. It's crazy. And it's way out here away from the city. It's super quiet and it's just nature. Long and then of drive. Course, some, a few neighbors here and there. But we're not completely disconnected. Our pep wave Wi-Fi internet has worked great. We've been able to get work here. done here. Cell phone signal's been a little spotty. Yep. But for a lot of people, they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so but if you haven't been here, you know, you might want to add it to your list. Or if you have been here, comment down below, let us know what you thought. Right. We were warned about the bugs. Yes. But we decided to come anyway, and it's totally worth it. Totally. <laughs> I'll have to put up some footage of some oh, bugs. Oh, <laughs> another favorite, another favorite late checkout. Oh, yes. <laughs> Huge perk. Was it 2 o'clock? Yes, and 2 o'clock. And it's, what time is it right now? <gasps> It's it, 20 till. Uh, yeah, it's we time, need to get it's going. Time to get, <laughs> it's time to get it's hooked perfect up. Perfect for us. We're most of the way packed up right now. Yeah. And I wish I could remember the rate per night. I don't think it was too bad. Uh, typical. This is a state park, Antelope Island State Park. I say it was 20. Does that sound right? Maybe. I did have to pay 18 extra for the extra yes, vehicle. That this is a rare thing. Not per day, but for the visit. So I paid extra extra $18 to have the extra vehicle yep. and you guys don't give us a hard time about having an extra vehicle we love doing it this way we have our reasons we have video about it we one have two our, videos about it one of our it. most asked questions yes. people keep asking That's why, why do we you have done a second two car two videos on the topic because we keep adding reasons why we love it this way so <laughs> right. we'll check that out if you really want to know yeah totally and if you are new to our channel hit that subscribe button that way you get notified when we release a another great video like this one. Yeah, and don't forget the bell, of course. And give it a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so long guys. Bye, and remember, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your, your journey. journey. Stop.